Yes. And we're back. Okay. Welcome to the Continuous Hinge installation webinar. Uh, this one is being sponsored by HL Flake. This was actually one of the classes that we were going to uh, teach at the event. Um, this uh, Thursday and Friday and Saturday, they were going to have a big trade show, education, uh, and uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, due to the current events, it was canceled along with everything else. And so... We're, we're trying to be as proactive as possible to go ahead and bring this out and, and get information to the people uh, as much as we possibly can here. So this is, this is the best that we could come up with um, given the circumstances, uh, technology, and time. Now, I've ran quite a few webinars. I've been doing webinars for four or five years now, and... Um, this is this is what we have to offer. So uh, this is going to be the continuous hinge. This will be one of many. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Looks like we got David, Richard, Kirk, Derek, Travis, Mick. Cool. All right. I can see your comments on my phone. So if you need any questions or you have any questions or you need anything, shoot those comments over. And I will try and answer them as best I can. Uh, can everybody hear and see clearly? Can you hear my voice clearly? And can you see the screen clearly? Yes, yes, yes. All righty. We'll dive right into it. Again, we're going to thank HL Flake for um, hosting what would have been an event, and they are now hosting this webinar. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, in the normal class, we would ask that you put your phones on vibrate or put them on silent, uh, whatever you need to do. We're all working men and women, so if you need to make a call, go ahead and do so. Just don't let it interrupt the show, please. Uh, feel free to take pictures, do whatever you want to do during this. Um, it is a class for you, so take advantage of it. All righty. Um, so the, uh, these guys didn't actually sponsor the event, but I did definitely want to give them a shout out. Uh, having to adjust and pivot and switch um, all of this to a webinar uh, is, is a little tricky guys. And, uh, we're trying to figure out because when we teach this class in at HL flake headquarters in Houston, um, you can apply to get CEU credits. And so one of the last thoughts of this was to try and figure out how we can get people their CEU credits, no guarantees. And allegedly in my opinion, I believe that greater Houston locksmith association uh, will be able to give you CEU credits for taking this class. You're going to have to talk to Travis with HL Flake after the event. Uh, I believe that the credits are only going to be offered for people that take the live event. We are trying to get this recorded. If the recording goes smoothly and we can come up with a test, we might be able to offer that um, later. We might be able to offer CEUs for watching the recorded version of it later. Um, but those are all just up in the air. Those are spitball ideas that are up in the air. So uh, we definitely want to thank Greater Houston Locksmith Association. Really need to support your associations right now in these times. Um, they're the ones that are going to get people together, come together, get organized, and help get knowledge out there. Uh, the other one is Texas Locksmith Association. Uh, they're always um, part of the events with HL Flake. They do a great job. They've got a lot of uh, members and we'll we'll see how we can pull everybody into the equation here. Also, um, I've chat with Derek Hooker a little bit about seeing if we can get some CEU credits for uh, North Carolina locksmiths. Um, and so preferred locksmith seminars from Derek Hooker is also uh, definitely a big part of this and very supportive of the webinar platform in these times. Uh, also, you guys probably know Locksmith Nation. Um, that is a group that uh, we started for Locksmiths. And if you are not part of it, definitely check it out. It's a free group. Uh, lots of information there for people to check out and see. 
Moving on, uh, HL Flake is the primary uh, supporter and sponsor of this. So right now they're combining forces with International Key Supply, McDonald Dash, H.E. Mitchell. Uh, they are a powerhouse as far as buying power goes, as far as distributing goes, as far as having knowledgeable staff and having the buying power to get you the best prices and the best equipment. Um, on time. So they have great staff that are extremely knowledgeable uh, in the, anybody can sell anything, but it takes somebody that's been in the industry to actually know what you need and be able to assist you with ordering to solve your problems. And that's what HO Flake does. They're my supplier. That is pretty much the only place I order stuff from. And they are awesome to deal with. Um, if you have a problem or anything with them, they're more than willing to uh, work with you to resolve it. And they are growing and only getting bigger and stronger. So definitely want to put a shout out for HL Flake. It's just a terrible tragedy that we could not have this event go on. But we're doing the best we can and we're, we're pivoting and we're moving and we're doing everything we can to go ahead and get started here. Perfect. Great. That's that's great to see. I'm going to briefly look at the phone to see comments. Um, let's see. Class is certified for NC. Yeah. Yeah. Derek's got a got a class. We actually taught uh, uh, yeah. right there. We got a marketing class in uh, North Carolina Locksmith Association, too. So um, that's that. Uh, give you just a few uh things on me and why I'm teaching this class and my accreditations. Uh, my name is Wayne Winton. I own and operate Tri-County Locksmith Service. I'm the founder of Locksmith Nation. Um, and we just do a ton of stuff in the industry, as you can see with the wall behind me. If you need uh, my accreditations and why I should be teaching this class, um, a wall full of articles, uh, training certifications, and teaching certifications should do the trick. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, we actually kind of ran out of wall for that. So anyways, that is why I am qualified to teach this class uh, and others in the future. So cool. All righty. Uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, I have actually taught this class with Steve Pate, who is uh, the owner or he's very high up in, in the Select Hinge class, or I'm sorry, in the Select Hinge um, <clears throat> organization. And I ran this class by him. So he saw it. He w participated in the very first one that I ever did. And he's definitely a part of this. So Anything that we do and show, I try and get a manufacturer involved and get their approval before I teach it to you because that's the way that it's supposed to be. You have to have your manufacturer. You can come up with a couple different ways that you think um, could improve the installation and get it checked out by them before we go ahead and teach other people how to do it. And those are the exact steps that we've taken to do so. I'm going to show you the original way that the Select Hinge Continuous Hinge SL57 was designed to be installed by Select Hinge in their actual video. And then I will show you the changes that I've made to make it a one person, one hour or less installation to do so. So it's gonna give you a broad range of options. Okay, I'm going to switch back and forth real quick just to make sure. All right, very good. Is anybody experiencing any buffering or no sound? It is highly recommended that you have a pretty good quality internet connection to make sure that you can stay up with this stuff because uh, we will be showing some brief uh, chops a video and those can t uh, buffer if you don't have a good internet connection. So make sure you got a good, real strong internet connection. If you have a laptop or you're watching it on, on something you can plug in, a good dedicated ether line, ethernet line is recommended. All righty, let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. All good, all good, all good. Froze a little bit. If you guys have freezing problems, find a little bit better internet connection. If you're watching on a laptop or computer, get an ethernet cable, pop it right in, plug it from your router. That will solve most of your problems. That's that's the biggest problem that we run into with webinars is everybody's internet is a little bit different. Okay, so let's solve the problem, all right? Putting money towards actually fixing the door, not 
putting money towards fixing the problem that will fail again. If you see the hinge located off on the right hand side, how much did this hinge cost them? This is straight from Steve's class. Okay. We asked permission to use all this stuff, but how much did this $25 hinge really cost? All right. We got oversized screws, weld repair, three service calls, and this hinge and this door is still not fixed. I don't know how much you guys charge, but I charge between $88 and $128 just for the service call to show up and a minimum of one hour labor at $95 an hour. They would have spent about $600 for me to come here three times to work on this door and have it still not work. Okay, We can fix this. Stop trying to put band-aids on gunshot wounds. If these doors are this trashed and this bad and this wore out, Put a select hinge continuous hinge on the door and quit messing around with the butt hinges or the pivot hinges that are currently installed and worn out on the door. All righty. Put money ahead. Get the job done. Your customer is going to be much more happy when you come by and fix that job on the first time than making two or three calls back. It just makes you and your company look like you do not know what you're doing and it makes you look unprofessional. All righty. Choosing the correct hinge for your application. Um, we've got lots of different types of doors, hollow metal doors, aluminum storefront doors, wood and fire doors, oversized doors. There's a bazillion different kinds of doors up there. And the select hinge continuous hinge has a hinge option for almost everything. You can have uh, center mounted. So the, the pivot point mounts just like a butt hinge where both uh, sections are mounted in the middle. And then you can have it surface mount, you can have it offset, um, they make a ton of different variety of hinges. If you call them, they will have a hinge that works for you. Uh, there's also a lot of ideas that we'll go over later in the class for things that are not just conventional doors. I've fixed everything from bathroom stalls to uh, freezer, walk-in freezers with a select hinge continuous hinge. So they have a hinge for you. <clears throat> Alrighty. These are the tools that you will need to do the job for your job prep. Uh, you don't have to have all of them, but this is the essentials that I consider what I need. Um, impact driver, drill bits, airbags, automatic punch, step bit, wrench, hammer, mallet or dead blow hammer, pry bar, screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, block of wood, shims, and a chisel. Um, Orange cones and caution tape will be on here too. We'll kind of go over that as well, but uh, some per personal protective equipment, um, but that's going to be up to your discretion at, as to what you decide to use. This is my basic kit right here. I have all this in uh, uh, one box and I take that. This is my continuous hinge box, okay? Right here. You can see that we've got angle grinder, impact driver, drill, sawzall, extra batteries, water, um, tablet, coffee. This is by far the most important um, tool you can have. Got to have proper energy and motivation and be awake for this. So we got to have some coffee. Uh, you can see I have all this in a tool bag right here. And this is my door storefront servicing tool bag. I like to have different bags for everything. When I do electronic strike installation and I have the routers and all that stuff, I have a bag dedicated to it. That way I'm not constantly going back to the truck, getting more parts. So this is what these tools look like. And here's where your air shims and airbags are. I mean, this is all the stuff that you're going to need. Uh, PPE or personal protective equipment. This is a very, very important part of this equation. You have to have, you have to protect yourself first. Okay. If you get hurt in the middle of a job, it's not going to do anybody any good. If you need to go to the hospital and you've got a door that has no hinges and no door hanging anymore, you've got problems. So make sure that you take those safety precautions extremely seriously. Uh, gloves, eye protection, hearing protection, caution cones, caution tape, anything to protect you or the public from the work area. We're going to have flying metal. We're going to be cutting things. We're going to be drilling. There's going to be drill shavings. Dogs walking by will get this stuff in their paws. You do not want to let the public near your work area. Make sure that you are safe and make sure that the public is safe. Anything 
your company or OSHA requires for safety equipment to do your job at that location. Keep in mind too, if you do a job at certain locations like government locations, you need to respect and abide by all of their rules. Government jobs have spark laws, uh, where if you're using a grinder or you're using anything that makes any kind of a spark, grinders, welders, cutting tools, any of those things, uh, you may need to have special permits for that. So make sure that you check out your local fire marshal listings, your local building inspector requirements, OSHA instructions and government uh, requirements before you start the job. This is not something to try and figure out halfway through when you have the door pulled and the hinges cut. Okay, make sure that you have everything all together before you get started. Additional equipment. If you are doing the cutting the hinge off method, you will need an angle grinder, a sawzaw with a Diablo carbide blade. I will go over why you need that as we go through. Uh, PPE, gloves, safety glasses, etc., caution tape, and cones. Have I gone over safety equipment enough? Hopefully so. Uh, safety, 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 safety. Protect you, protect everybody around you, protect the building, protect the contents. All righty. Uh, so this, the, the whole reason that I'm such a believer in these uh, continuous hinges is this is why I no longer replace pivot hinges. Uh, there's a story that goes along with this. Uh, we started doing storefront servicing about three years ago. And one of the first things you learn is to go ahead and start with uh, pivots, right? You replace pivots and you you can do that and, and make money doing so. So we started doing it. Um, two weeks after replacing a pivot hinge on at this particular location, I replaced it with a brand new bottom pivot and brand new top pivot hinge. The bottom pivot broke and the door fell off. This is two weeks after I was there. It makes me look completely unqualified and unprofessional to be able to have this happen. Now, this is also a huge liability. Uh, I just happened to get very lucky where the customer was willing to work with me. They let me know right away. And we were able to get there in about an hour after it happened. And luckily, the door closer held on to the top of the door and nothing actually happened. Nobody got hurt. However, this could have gone horribly wrong. I mean, just imagine if this door fell on somebody, fell on somebody's kid, dog, pet, etc., caused damage to the building. You would definitely be on the hook for, for a lot of bad stuff. So this is why I don't replace pivots anymore because of this one particular uh, occasion and in, in, in installation. I, I just, I won't do it anymore. Um, it was a really bad, uh, it was a really bad installation. You can see here that the door frame and the door was already cracked. You can see the cracks and where we installed the new pivots right here. This, I told them that it was cracked. I told them that this was going to be a bad idea and they just refused to listen to me. So, you know, it's kind of on them that they didn't listen. I also didn't know all about all the continuous hinges and, and whatnot yet. Um, and so this is, this is just kind of where we're at. So we installed the pivots. This is the pivot being installed on the door. And then this is the bottom pivot being installed on the, on the wood. And this is what I think was the main failure was the wood was so rotted and bad that it had no way to support the pivot. If we'd mounted this on concrete, we probably wouldn't have had the same issue happen. Uh, John Jeffrey says, Derek, who authorized this as approved CEU credits and NC, you will have to talk to Derek after the class. Uh, as far as I know, it seems as though he will be able to get that for you, but there are no guarantees until after the class. As far as CEUs go, you're going to have to email either Derek or Travis to get certifications, uh, a diploma or certification and talk to them about the CEU. So hopefully that addresses that. And we'll go over that a little more at the end of the show. Uh, but back to the pivot, you can see it's sitting on this wood and that is just bad times all around. Uh, it, it, it taught me a very, very valuable lesson that this is just all bad, all bad news. So if it were on concrete, I doubt it would have broke, but it still possibly could have. However, I've never seen a continuous hinge break uh, and, and the door fall off. So if it's been installed properly, so this is just eliminating my liability 
and eliminating the chance of somebody getting hurt. I'm just not going to do pivots anymore unless it's absolutely, utterly required. All righty, so we're going to go over the conventional method of installing the uh, continuous hinge. You gather your tools. Um, we went over the tool checklist. Check the box and make sure that you have the correct hinge and parts. This is extremely important. I definitely have a story about that as well. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit more later in the show, but trust me, you have to make sure that the correct hinge is in the box. Um, I actually fired a supply company because they sent me the wrong hinge on a very, very important job that I had already cut the hinges off and I did not look in the box. And so there I am with no pivots, no way to put them back on, no hinge that will work because the offset that they sent would not work in that in any way shape or form and a very very dumb look on my face because what am i supposed to do now uh it it's very very difficult to come up with a solution for that after the fact so all righty uh make sure that you check the box remove existing hinges butt or pivots removed door closer removed you would then drop the door so this is the conventional method recommended by select hinge you would drop the door or if it's an interior door and the cutting the hinge method is not an option you cannot do the cutting the hinge method inside it's an exterior door exterior hinge option only uh, you're going to prep the opening. You're going to reinstall the door in the opening. You're going to add eighth inch shims to the door to create an even gap all the way around or an even reveal at an eighth of an inch all the way around or the best you can do with the current opening. Travis says, Greater Houston Locksmith Association has approved CEU credits for Texas and this webinar. Awesome. Cool stuff. Groundbreaking, guys. I don't know that a webinar has actually offer, or had e, uh, CEUs offered before. So we are making history today, uh, as far as I can tell. All right, so you're going to inflate your airbags to hold the door in place. You're going to cut the hinge to the exact measurements of the door. Fasten the hinge to the frame side with self-tapping screws. Fashion, fasten the hinge to the door using the round head self-tapping screws. Release the airbags and the shims to check the swing and the alignment of the door. If the door needs adjustment, now is the time to do so. Realign the door and reinstall self-tappers until the door swings correctly. That is if you made a mistake. Hopefully you don't make a mistake and you get it right the first time. Door is now ready to drill through bolts. Once this is done, the door can no longer be adjusted. This will go over all of these steps in very very clear detail very shortly. All right. Determine the secure side of the door and install the through bolts, making sure that the ribs grab for easy installation. Place the round cap on the secure side of the door tap with hammer. So the round cap is the round portion of your through bolt or sex bolt rendering it so that if somebody came by, it would be on the locking side of the door. So if this side of the door has the lock, the round head of the through bolt needs to go on that side of the door. So if somebody peels the cap off, they can't use a screwdriver and undo all the through bolts and remove the door from the, the opening. Okay. That's why we do that. There is, there are two special exceptions for that and we will go over both of them. <clears throat> You will install the Phillips head part of the through bolt, remove the airbags and shims, check swing of the door, reinstall closer, and you are done. Collect your money and go home. That is the conventional way to do it. All right, we're going to watch a video here. From Select Hinge and give my voice a break for a second. Can you guys hear the video? This presentation will walk you through the installation of a select SL57 full surface geared continuous hinge. You'll see how a select hinge takes no longer to install than a butt or pivot hinge, but saves you time and hassle eliminating repairs down the road. First, you'll see how to position the door and hinge. Then you'll see how to attach the hinge to the frame and door. And finally, to ensure the door swings properly. 
Remember to always follow proper safety precautions when using power tools and wear safety glasses when appropriate. First, remove the installation instructions and fastener packet. Make sure to save the instructions and read them carefully before beginning. The fastener packet will contain shoulder screws, center punches, barrel nuts, self-drilling, self-threading door screws, and self-drilling, self-threading frame screws. Step one, remove the existing door. Start by removing any door closers. Remove the old butt hinges from the door. Make sure to use the correct size head for the screws. Screws may have rusted or corroded over time and may be hard to remove. Remove the door from the opening. Next, lay the door down on the hinge box to protect the door from damage. Then remove the remaining butt hinges. Step 2. Fit the door to the opening. First, place the door back into the opening to check the fit. Next, shim the door to align it correctly in the opening, starting with the shims at the bottom. Place the remaining shims so that you have a 1 8 inch gap on the latch and top sides. If you have the proper gap, the frame doesn't need to be square. Step 3. Prepare the hinge. There are three set screws on the side of the door side hinge leaf. Start by loosening these three set screws on the door side cover with a 5 64th inch Allen wrench. Be careful not to back them out all the way. They can fall out and be difficult to find. After loosening the set screws, remove the door side cover. Then remove the frame side leaf cover, which is not attached to the hinge. Step four, attach the hinge to the frame. First, align the hinge with the top of the door and center it on the frame. You can move the hinge horizontally to align it with any brick or molding, even if it's not square. Be sure that a minimum of 7 8 inch of the frame leaf is applied to the frame of the door. The gear cap doesn't have to be centered on the gap, and the door and hinge don't need to be perfectly level. Next, mark the drill holes. It is recommended that you mark the top four holes. Drive in the top frame screw with a Phillips drive before putting on the hinge. You may need a stepladder, especially if you're doing it alone. Remove the screw, then hold the hinge in place and drive in the top screw. Next, install the other frame screws. Notice that there are four holes for the door screws. These will hold the door in place until you install the security fasteners. Next, install the four door screws. Step 5. Check the door swing. After removing the shims, check to see that the door swings freely and closes properly. If you need to adjust the swing, remove the door screws, reshim the door, and drill new screw holes through the hinge door leaf. Remember that once the hinge is installed, the door will settle about 1 16th of an inch. Step 6. Install the security fasteners. First, replace the shims in the latch side gap to keep the door closed while installing the screws. Make sure to install the fasteners properly. The rounded head of the barrel nut should face the side of the door you want to make tamper resistant. The head of the shoulder screw should face the other side. Next, drill holes in the door with a 3 8 inch bit for the barrel nuts. Make sure to keep the drill level. Then tap in the barrel nuts with a rubber mallet. Don't worry if they don't go all the way in. They'll pull in when you install the screws from the other side. 
Finally, install all the shoulder screws on the other side of the door. The final step is to install the hinge leaf covers. First install the frame side cover which is non-removable. Tap it into place with a rubber mallet or use a wood shim with a regular hammer. Next, install the door side cover, which is removable in case you want to install a new door in the same frame in the future. Place the cover, snap it into place, and tighten the three set screws. Finally, reinstall any door closers. Your Select SL57 hinge is now installed and your door is ready for a lifetime of use. Unmatched durability. Covered by the industry's only continuous warranty. Select hinges. All right. So that, that is the original way that um, Select Hinge uh, recommends doing it. Now, if you're doing an interior door, that is going to be the way you're going to have to do it. You're not going to be able to make a bunch of smoke and sparks inside the building. So definitely keep that in mind. The video definitely shows you the options that you have. It also shows one person doing this installation. However, if you get a big heavy duty glass door or an oversized door, you are not picking that door up by yourself. I guarantee that unless you are halfway to Hercules, uh, it's not happening. Some of the doors that we're going to show in this presentation, there's absolutely no way. I'm, I'm 6'1 and 200 pounds, and I would not be able to pick that door up by myself and align it and get it into place. So... That's why we came up with this way. Uh, installing the hinge without removing the door. Uh, so far, I don't know anybody else that's done it this way, so I'm just going to go ahead and claim it for now until somebody contests it. Uh, this is going to be the Wayne Winton method. Uh, tools, parts, and checklists. Do this before starting the job. Set out all of your tools and confirm you have the correct hinge before starting the project. The one, I think the the videos, some of the videos that I'm going to be showing you are the exact job where I ordered these hinges. It was not through HL Flake. It was through a different supplier. They sent me the wrong hinges. I ordered an SL57 Enduronautic flush mount, and they sent a Roton. Uh, it was countered. It was a countered um hinge so it was basically offset which would run it smack in, into the brick on the side and it would absolutely not work. I did not find any of this out until after we had already cut both of the doors off of City Hall in our town. Okay, that is a bad time to figure out that you have made an epic, epic error. Uh, luckily we had I had one hinge that was uh, the correct one. I just had it as uh, in stock. And I had another one that was aluminum colored, even though I needed Duranautic, I painted it with uh, Duranautic paint because there was absolutely no other option in this case. So make sure that you have the correct hinge in the box. This is Wayne here with Trey County Locksmith Service, and today we're going to be doing a uh, select hinge, continuous hinge. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this without ever having to pull the door. You can make this a one-man job. You're not going to have to pull the door, uh, but we'll go over the basics first. Uh, last time we tried to do this, uh, they sent the wrong hinge. Uh, it was a supplier issue. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you open the box before you do anything, and make sure that you have in the correct color and finish that you ordered otherwise you're going to be stuck last time we cut the hinges off had the door uh, undone and then looked in the box only to find that they set a offset pivot hinge which would not work and be compliant with this uh, the door would only open about 30 degrees so then we had a problem the door is half hung luckily we had an extra spare continuous hinge uh, we had to paint it and it was a little bit short but we made it work. So today we're going to make sure that everything is perfect and everything is fine before we even get started. 
And then we're going to come over here. Right there, we're going to pin this door in place using airbags. We're going to A, lock the door to keep people from coming in and out of here for safety. You also notice that we have caution tape set up. If you can set up caution tape, that's going to be a great idea. We're going to be using grinders, saws, machinery, tools, things that are going to throw metal and aluminum, so you want to keep the public away from you. We're going to basically pin this door up. You can see the difference here. We've got much more droop and sag here than here. This door's already been done. Uh, we're going to be doing this one today. Pin this door up in the upright position, shim it into place, cut the hinge, cut the hinge, drill the bolts, drill the bolts. Bolts are going to drop down. We're going to pull the bolts out. That's a very important uh, step because otherwise they're going to be in there trapped and they're going to grind and, and bind and, and bad things are going to happen. So we're going to have to pull all those bolts out of the bottom, make sure you get all four, and then we're going to mount the new continuous hinge, surface mount, screw it into place, and be done. This should be a one-man job about an hour. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Okay. Hopefully that all makes sense. I hate to beat a dead horse to death, but man, that really, really, really put me in a really bad place. And there is no way that I would ever uh, let anybody else get in that position. So I want to make sure that you are definitely really prepared so that doesn't happen. Uh, why do I keep mentioning this? If you have the correct hinge, the supplier sent me the wrong hinge. I had hinges cut off before we checked the box. I had another hinge on the truck. I was able to uh, reattach the door, but you cannot count on the people sending you the product to send the correct product. It is your responsibility before you actually get the project started. At least that's my take on it. So go ahead and uh, do what you will with that information. But trust me, that is a heart sinking feeling when the wrong stuff is in the wrong box. Alrighty, uh, this is kind of what the job site looks like. We got it all taped off. This is a great way to just keep everybody nice and safe. Keep your tools safe, keep your people safe, keep everybody safe. Using grinders, drills, and saws, it's a good idea to protect the public. Flying metal and aluminum is no joke, it's dangerous. I highly recommend caution tape off your work area. Even if you drop the door, it will keep customers away from the door and your working area. Extra, extra important. Safety cannot be stressed enough. And that's what it looks like all taped off. Tool danger warning. Uh, you can read all this if you choose. It's basically a disclaimer on uh, angle grinders and what can happen if you misuse them. All right, tool list. One bag, one trip. Trips to the truck cost time and money. Get organized, get a bag, and get everything you need. I have got this hinge installation down to about 20 minutes. I actually did a double door in 45 minutes from pulling into the parking space to leaving the facility. 45 minutes, two continuous hinges installed on a double door opening. So if you get it right, you can really save time and really make a lot of money. You can either spend all day doing this or you can spend about an hour. It's up to you. Get your bag, get your tools, get tooled up, and get ready to work. Select hinge, SL57 is the most popular hinge uh, in bronze or aluminum. This is your part number right here. They sell it in an 85 inch, uh, 90, I believe it's a 93 or 95 inch. And I think they can have custom ones. There's like 105 too, if you need it. So that is the biggest thing to remember is make sure that you have a long enough hinge for your job. Most of your standard jobs are gonna be an 85 inch hinge. Those are the ones that I stock. It, if you need a longer one, they can make them for you, okay? So make sure that you know the length of the opening. That's part of your job prep before you get there. When we bid out a job, throw a tape on that door. If it's an extra tall door, make sure you account for that when you order the parts. Check your parts. Empty the bolt bag and make sure you have all of the correct parts. Here's a tech tip. Always have a complete extra set of both aluminum and duranautic screws. Number one, these come in handy when you're doing any kind of storefront work, door closers, all kinds of stuff. If you've got something that keeps stripping or pulling out, you can use one of these wonderful through bolts and they will work amazingly well. Also, I have received 
uh, continuous hinges without a bolt kit in them. That has happened. So if you, once again, you can check the box, you can make sure the hinge is correct. You can do everything you can do. And uh, you still don't get a bag of bolts. And that was, that was an, another supplier issue. But again, it wasn't HL Flake. It was somebody else. Um, I'm not going to mention names, but it is what it is. But make sure that you have all the parts before you get started there. Yeah, HL Flake was not the parts supplier that sent that out. It was definitely a different one. So keep that out there uh, and uh, make sure that you have the bolt kit as well because this is a very, very important par part of the equation. If you have leftover bolts, make sure that you keep them for the next job. They are extremely valuable. All right, lay out the hinge and inspect it for damage. Make sure it's not scratched, bent, cut, or otherwise. Even if your supplier sends it out, the mail can still screw it up, bend it, fold it, run into it with a forklift. They can do a lot of different things. Uh, I've seen just, just getting safe deliveries. I've seen things that you wouldn't even believe were possible. Um, how they managed to bend half-inch steel on a safe is beyond me, other than just forklift roulette, I guess. But... Um, Check your stuff out before you get it mounted and, and get ready to go. All righty, support and lock the door if possible. I do. I use the key and use your flush bolts and lock the door in place. Those are all going to be alignment tools to make sure that the door is aligned properly. All right, the first step is going to be to put your airbags in the bottom right here. I like to have two airbags. That way it lifts up really evenly. If you put just one, it's going to kind of veer off to one side or the other. Place your shims up here, just like so. They're nice and tight. And then these shims, suck it up against the wall over there. And that's that. All right. I cannot stress enough, always use a good guard with your angle grinder, uh, proper rated and correct size of blades for the task. Beware of fire and smoke hazards associated with using an angle grinder. Uh, preparations for the work area and permits for your location. If you're on a government facility and you need burn permits, you better have burn permits. Uh, if you're doing anything for, for any of the city municipalities, you better make sure that you have everything in a row. If you need to pull a permit, pull a permit. Make sure that you have everything in line before getting started. Uh, this is an external option only. Safety glasses, full face shield gloves, and flame retardant uh, clothing are all recommended. All right, warning, we do have a graphic pick up next, but this is the only way that I can stress and actually make it hit home. I always laughed at people for, you know, doing all this extra safety precautions, equipment, et cetera. And then you take a look at these pictures and maybe it's not so funny anymore. Okay. We're going to give you 10 second warning. If you want to get out, take a look away, et cetera. We do have a graphic picture coming up next, but it will hit home and it will definitely change your mind about how you use and interact with an angle grinder. We are changing the slide now. Yeah. That's what happens when a disc blows apart. It ends up in your face, okay? Bad times. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but that's why you need to make sure that you do everything properly, okay? We're going to get cutting the top hinge. There's a video for cutting the top hinge here. Okay. <clears throat> Oop, and okay. So you're cutting the top hinge. Pry the hinge loose. Use a screwdriver or a lever bar to remove the hinge. You do not need to cut through the entire hinge. It shows about half inch left on the screwdriver and it will easily break. Now this is one way to attack that hinge. I also have some videos and some pictures of my new way where instead of cutting that hinge at an angle this way, we actually cut it right down the center and kind of crack it like an egg, okay? So we will show both of those ways to do that. I just wanna make sure that you get everything lined up here you can use the angle grinder with a five inch wheel uh it's a little more sketchy and dangerous you could use the uh sawzall with the carbide blade and once you have it most of the way cut the rest of it should just break right off 
picture of that then we can see our bolt holes really easy <clears throat> do we have our hammer by chance yep I see that I need the hammer see how nicely that worked out uh, yeah. that's gonna give us an even better hold than we had last time and we're about an inch away. Well, I don't know exactly how much it is, maybe three quarters of an inch. The grinder did not touch any of this, the center part of the grinder. And now these are lined up perfectly for drilling. So let's get. So you're starting to see how that's all coming together. Okay. This is the first way that I decided to do it because when we cut it this way, I can see the pin and I can see the two screws cutting it vertically is actually easier it's probably safer and uh it it actually works a little bit better because then you don't even have to drill the bolts out in most cases but you can see how this provides the pin once you crack it in half you can see that the top pin is no longer engaged you just tap it with a hammer and it comes right out and then your top two screws are now revealed uh, and you can drill those out so here is the splitting it down the middle method. You can see how we cut it down the middle. Again, you pop your screwdriver in, crack it over, it pops it. It actually usually, if you do it right down the center, just perfect, then it will actually get the, uh, it'll actually crack it on both sides of the bolts and they just fall right in. It is so, so slick when that happens. Uh, this reveals the pin and it is now easy to remove using the same drill bit as the bolt. So you're going to use the same size drill bit diameter as the bolt uh, to create a perfect cone or center section so that your smaller bit will go in there and drill that bolt out. The hinge is now removed. Bolt will fall into the door and it will be removed later. This is drilling the actual bolt out, okay? I'm just pecking it, and then you can use a smaller drill bit first. Maybe we're drilling through all the way on this particular one, but usually I'll use the larger drill bit, 3 8 drill bit, get a peck, get a center on that bolt, and then use a smaller hole to drill a pilot hole, and then follow it back out with the, the larger bit. Should. See? That's looking good. in there again. Screwdriver and beat it off. Yeah. Okay. So. Try and avoid hammers when we can. Yeah. Okay. And there you have it. There you go. Bingo. And then just watch how much it drops out because it did drop out a little. Yeah, we'll just get the mallet and push it back in. Perfect. Awesome sauce. Okay. So now we have the hinge removed. Again, the reason I use the larger drill bit is to get that center point because it comes together in a cone and it'll perfectly make a center center option for you. And then when you use a small bit, it'll go right into that centering bit and it'll go in and then you can, you'll drill the bolt out faster if you pilot drill it and then use the larger bit. Yeah, they do kind of dull fast, but I just replace them. Also a uh, tip on drill bits, it's probably mentioned in here, but have a set of drill bits, a complete set of drill bits that you use for wood and aluminum, and then have a completely separate bit that or set of bits that's used on steel. And when, your when my aluminum bits when i buy a brand new set of uh, bits once a year or maybe twice a year depending on how much we use them i'll buy a brand new set of bits my brand new set of bits becomes my aluminum and wood bits and my aluminum and wood bits become my steel bits and then the steel bits just get retired there's what it looks like off 
the the hinge is now gone and it is we did not pull the door in any way shape or form after drilling uh angle grinder is skipping and the operation is too dangerous to control uh the tool cannot be controlled and we abandoned this method find a safer option i switched to the sawzall and a carbide blade to finish up the job cutting the bottom pivot this is why i said you need a sawzall with a carbide blade get it going first get it going first <clears throat> Okay, abandon ship. Do not continue if you're doing that. It's no good. It's a recipe for disaster. What about using butter bits instead? I mean, you can use whatever bits you want to use. Uh, if you use carbide bits on steel and aluminum, chances are they will, uh, carbide will chip and break. I mean, you're more than welcome to experiment with whatever you want. I find carbide, uh, like, but like the, it's a carbide bit. Is, is a butter bit if for people that don't know a carbide bit or a butter bit would be it has some of them have serrations on them but it's similar to a strong arm bit where you have a, a softer metal shank and a carbide tip they're used for safe work in most cases or drilling out high security locks they work but they cause more pressure it takes way more pressure to get the the carbide to bite in i find uh, than a regular bit. So I still recommend the HSS bits for drilling through aluminum and milder steel. Even the bolts are usually like a, like a grade eight bolt is still only like 30 on the Rockwell hardness scale. Whereas those drill bits are meant to drill out stuff that's like 60, 65, 70 on the Rockwell hardness scale, like uh, safe hard plate. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, that's what your carbide blade is going to look like. Diablo carbide metal cutting blade. We abandon the um, angle grinder and switch over to this. Got to have options. All right. There's a Sawzall safety and danger warning page. You can visit this link if you so choose. Uh, we're just going to get into the video right now. Sawzalls do a lot of damage too. Just make sure you're in control of the tool and familiar with it before you use the tool out in the field. If you've never used a Sawzall before, don't use it on your job that you're, that you're going to need it. Practice with it at home. Cut some metal. Get some different blades. Find the ones you like. Put stuff in a vise. Cut some wood. Do all these different things before you go out in the field and do it. Easy. Hold on to it now. Don't be scared. Just go. Go. coming up with aluminum okay and the blade is starting to get dull so we may just need to get a new blade okay I see. okay so make sure you have a sharp blade sharp blade round two go You could probably spray a little bit of lubricant or something on there to prevent the metal from the aluminum from gumming up. But you need the carbide to cut through the hardened steel bearing and race in that pivot. Get the screwdriver. 
gotta know what the tool's gonna do. Yeah. And you should be a pay, paying attention. Like when drilling, yeah. you need to be paying attention to what kind of cuttings you're get getting. Ooh, look at you. In, oh, sorry, guy. Sorry, I'd have mashed him. <laughs> See? Ah, you don't have to go all the way down. Okay. Got it? Because then, then the metal changed. Because, well, we're taking that out anyway. Yeah, so. we're going to take that out with the, with the deal anyway. So. Nice. Okay? Way easier. Yeah. Not that scary. Just got to know what you're doing. And you need the hardened carbide blade. You can't use a regular blade because you're going to have to cut through steel. These well, hardened race bearings. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Does that all make sense to everybody? Um, the angle grinder has its place, and the sawzall has its place. If it doesn't, if one tool doesn't work, go ahead and switch your game and and use a different tool to do so. Um, for the bottom hinge removal, uh, it demonstrates how the bolts are located and how to drill them out flawlessly. The same concept uh, for drilling the screws is is like what you would drill for on a deadbolt. When, you, when you're drilling for the screws on a deadbolt, you're basically trying to drill and hope they hook up and actually screw the screw back out. If you're lucky, that's perfect in a perfect case scenario. If it doesn't work that way, you will drill through the bolt eventually and then it will fall off. Um, this is done correctly. It exposes the screws uh, and it makes it easy to drill out. The center... Uh, this centers the drill bit and allows for perfect drilling. So that goes back to using the large or same size diameter bit to give it a peck to give you a center point for your smaller bit to drill through. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Here's what that hinge looks like. You can see very clear, plain as day, where those screws are now mounted and located at. And it makes it extremely easy for us to drill those out. And then we split that down the middle. This is the split down the middle method. Same exact concept, only instead of cutting this way, we have cut this way. We cut perfectly straight on. Every time I've done it that way, uh, using the angle grinder works perfectly fine. We have not had to use the sawzall when you come into it perfectly straight. So hopefully that makes sense. Do we have everybody still here? Uh, everybody go ahead and post a little comment or something on there. We're about an hour in. It's 4.04 my time make sure that you guys post something in there uh if you guys if they are going to do ceu credits we're going to need to make sure that everybody's here for the entire length of the show so here hey hello questions if you got them all right bolts are drilled out to remove the hinge drilling a pilot hole with a smaller diameter is going to get you through this bolt faster if you take two people the exact same people exact same drill bits and exact same bolt and one of you pre-drills it with a smaller drill bit that is sharp and then drills it out with the larger size drill bit that person is going to get done first every single time if everything is even because it is much harder to shove a 3 8 drill bit through that hole with blunt force than having it pilot drilled out first So we're going to use a drill bit that's the same size as the hole to be able to center punch that drill bit is shaped like a bomb. It's going to center the smaller bit so that it doesn't wander. It's basically making a center punch in the bolt. Okay. Now use that one. No, you don't have to do anything. Just use that one. Okay. You're going to be, no wait. This is a small bit. So you want to set it on screw and you want to set your torque setting. Grab this and pull the trigger. Here, break. Yeah. That's your clutch so that you don't break the bit in there. If you break the bit in there, we're screwed. Okay? Yep. And
So I really want you to pay attention to the drillings and the filings that are coming out of this thing. Very sharp, very nice. That looks to be about a quarter inch bit. Okay. And then a large bit is used to center the hole. A small bit can be used to drill the harder steel of the bolt. I'm going to use the bigger bit. After the pilot hole's been drilled. So it literally cannot fall out. To get the other bolts out. Yes. And then we'll blow all this stuff away here. Yeah, I do use a torque bit. Um, I just, I don't know. I kind of like it. Um, I, the other, we did drill the quarter inch drill bit uh, with the regular drill. It's it's just those Milwaukee bits are so nice because they have the hex shank. It's just super easy to check them. Uh, pop them in and out as opposed to grabbing the chuck. You know how it is when you get a cordless drill chuck and you get something over tight. It, it's just the fastest way that I've seen it. The other one is click, click, boom, click, click, boom. You're in, you're out, you're done, you're moving on. It's the fastest way I've seen how to do it anyways. Um, it just works for me. But there's no problem using a conventional drill or a non-impact driver. The actual proper term for that is a impact driver. Okay, there we go. Perfect execution of drilling of the bolts from the outside. This is picture perfect clean. And the only reason that this one is done this way and the one the reason that this one got filmed is because I've probably managed to do it wrong every other which way. So I have done this wrong so many times that we finally stumbled upon how to do it right. Uh, I have made all of the errors so you don't have to. That's a hook bolt or dead latch instead of vertical rod. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're using the airbags at the bottom to pin the door up against your shims, and you're using an airbag on this side of the door, the opening side of the door, non-hinged side of the door to pin it this way. You could run into that door if you wanted to, and it will not open. I've had it happen. Hopefully that answers your question, Mark. All right, getting the bolts out. Uh, you can use a step bit to open up the bottom of hole uh, large enough to retrieve the remains of the bolts that you drilled out. Make sure that you get the same number of bolt heads out as you drilled. Now is the time. This will not be an option after the hinge is installed. You can drill darn near a one-inch hole in the bottom of this door, and the hinge is still going to cover it up. Okay, so you're not doing any damage. You're not causing any structural integrity damage to the door whatsoever. You are not going to hurt it okay but we have to get all those bolts and all that stuff that you just drilled in and dropped down into the door because that bolt that pile of bolts is going to sit at the bottom and it's going to rake and bind against the ground that's uneven in the threshold and you're going to bend or break the door if you don't remove all of the bolts washers spacer plates anything that's inside there uh side note you will usually find a friendly little rat's nest or a spider i think i mentioned that in the other one when uh, sarah was cutting that hinge a uh, friendly little spider came out and um there there's always little i found everything in there snakes bugs uh all kinds of stuff, little rat's nests. I mean, it's it's crazy what you'll find in there. All right, now we're going to use a step bit to enlarge the hole so that we can pull all the bolts out. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. 
Is that about what the other one was? All we need so is I enough. All we need is to be able to get that out of there. Yeah, that should be plenty. Mm, maybe a little bigger. Okay. And then all that other stuff is going to get boogered up. Make sure we pull one. Keep them all together. Pull that trash out of there. Spider webs. Rat's nest. Hey, extra for door cleaning service. Internal uh -huh. door cleaning service. Here, maybe you can connect that thing around. Oh, is that oh, two? Yep. Two. <clears throat> You can bend that however you need to. Three or more. So you can see that these would go down in there and bind everything. And there's four, right? So you want to make sure you have four. Leave that right there for picture. Click. All right. Make sure we pull all these out. All righty. So there's all the nasty door goo that comes out of there. Uh, that's a nice shot of the... Step bit, you can use a step bit, hole saw, whatever. Um, you could make a pretty big hole. Uh, getting the bolts out of the door, flexible magnet to pull all the bolt hardware out, bolts, washers, backing plates, anything that's in there, you need to get it out. After the hinge is put on, this will no longer be an option, and you will royally, royally be angry at yourself for not getting that out of there. Um, you can also check this. There's one more little time that we could do this and, and still get stuff out of there is the last step where we mount the hinge over the frame side and install just the pan head um, self-tapping screws on the door itself to give you that check swing before we install the actual through bolts. You could, if you discovered that you forgot something in there, you could pull those self-tappers out, pull the door back down and, and get that back out of there. But it's it's best to do it now. If you don't do it now, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah, all the bolts are magnetic. Uh, bolts, bolts and washers and backing plates, all that's going to be magnetic. Uh, the aluminum shavings uh, will will not be, but there shouldn't be too much of that in there to begin with. Everything that's everything that you need to get out should be magnetic and ferrous. Uh, I've never seen them use a aluminum bolt on anything. Okay, there it is. Everything's all drilled out. Pull all that stuff out of there and your little rat's nest and spider webs and everything else. Say hello to your black widow. I guess there should be a safety uh, precaution for that too. I have 1,000% seen black widow nests inside the doors, so be aware. All right, removing the bottom pivot. A wrench is used to remove the bottom fixed stud from the hinge. Tech tip. Using a gear wrench is a wise investment and a huge time saver. I actually have a custom made and custom ground gear wrench that I use to do pivot adjustments. I will not replace them anymore, uh, but I will adjust them if that's all that's required. And I actually shaved my wrench down with a grinder and a, and a sander and actually made it thin. So it actually fits in between the door and the pivot so that you can adjust that pivot and thread it up while it's in place, you never need to pull anything off. A uh, couple tech tips, soaking the bottom pivot in penetrating oil can help remove that stud. Sometimes they're just practically welded in there and they're just not gonna come out. Um, stubborn pivots can be cut or broke at the mounting plate. You would basically just use, a, I use a Dremel or the angle grinder to score that bottom pivot plate like the whole entire thing, not just the stud, anything that sticks out, score it and then smack the living crap out of it with a dead blow hammer, or I'm sorry, a, a big metal hammer, something that'll give you that cracking impact and it'll break the bottom pivot off. Good wrench. Go ahead and just pull this bolt out. If it'll go, usually you can get enough torque on it when it's when that thing's out of the way. Even if the bottom uh, adjustment nut or locking Allen that goes into the side of it is bad or rusted, which 90% of them are, um, it'll still come loose. You can get enough torque on it. Worst case scenario, use the angle grinder and just cut it off flat. Okay. This one's flush enough here. We're not going to have to worry about busting that loose. You 
could also use a chisel and a hammer and smack the crap out of that like we did before mm -hmm. and it shears it because it's cast aluminum which is also pretty scary because if this door takes a really good shot that would yeah. too. There we go. Now the door prepped is ready, ready for the hinge, and it's nice and clean. All this is going to get covered up by the continuous hinge, and this is not really going to weaken the door. We haven't, you know what I mean? It's all going to be bolted up. Where did I get a custom gear wrench? Uh, I bought a regular gear wrench and then shaved it down thin using a angle grinder and a belt sander on the open box head side so that I could adjust that hinge it would basically the you can't shave down the gear wrench side because there's too many moving components but the opened end box head side uh i just shaved it down to boy about quarter inch or so maybe a little bit thicker uh five sixteenths and it works so good it works so slick i can do i could do almost all of my pivot adjustments um with just using an airbag under the door, lift the door up, it lifts you up, it gives you just enough room to get in there, give that thing a couple turns, get it to puff up a little bit and go up, and then the door stops sagging. It's for those people that don't have the, they can't afford the continuous hinge option, and they just want to put a Band-Aid, they want to Band-Aid it. Um, we can, those, those hinges are all definitely adjustable. So, okay, we watch that one. All right, uh, here is the front cutting method where we've cut into it this particular way. And this has a tri-bolt option, okay? So here is an extremely good example of different mounting styles for pivots and why the center down the uh, this way is much better because on this one, you have a bolt here, here, and here, and you can see on that mounting plate, after you cut the two, it actually just folds out, and the bottom hole is already built into the door. That's why I have no issues creating a large hole to pull all of the guts out, because a lot of doors already have that cut into them. Vertical. Yeah, that's the word we're looking for. Vertical. Well, it depends on your definition of vertical, I suppose. But uh, yeah, if you cut into it vertically, then that would that allows you to do this. So this is a, a picture of the other option and everything's already done. You don't even have to drill the hole out in the bottom. It's already there for you. All right, now we're gonna cut the hinge to size. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna measure the hinge to fit the door exactly or slightly less. Measure twice, cut once. Be aware of the bearing in the hinge. There are two of them. We will cover that in detail shortly. Uh, again, I use a Milwaukee 18 volt cordless seven and a quarter inch circular saw. You can use whatever size you want. I just recommend this as opposed to an angle grinder or any other cutting methods. It's just so clean. It looks it looks like it was machined that way. You can't even tell it was cut. Um, the Diablo Steel Demon blade is easy effortless clean cut of the hinge okay dangerous for circular saws you can go to a website and see that um, make sure you're familiar with a circular saw if you've never used a circular saw before don't use it the first time on the job do do it if you if the best way that you could take this class and actually put it to use if you've never installed a continuous hinge is do one on one of your own doors if you have a shop or you have something somewhere where you have a door that needs to be fixed and you can put that in there, go ahead and do so. Uh, do it on yours first. Practice cutting with wood. Practice using these tools before you bring them out in the field. So this is an 18 volt Milwaukee portable saw. It's gonna be a cutoff saw, seven and a half inch blade or seven and a quarter, whatever the standard is, seven and a quarter. But we're gonna have the Steel Demon Diablo blade. That's going to be the ticket. That's going to let us cut metal, steel, aluminum, wood, whatever we come into, wood with nails, and it's going to make a nice clean cut for this. The one thing you really need to remember with these continuous hinges is that if you're going to cut past a bearing, see how there's this little guy right here with this Allen head screw? This is very important. That bearing has to be there. That is what supports the door. As soon as we cut the end off, the two pieces of that continuous hinge that gear together will slide apart. That is what will happen to your hinge if you cut this bearing. You cannot cut past the bearing. See that? If you cut
cut anywhere past here, you need to take this part and move that bearing on down the line. It's interchangeable, but you've got two of them, okay? We've got one and two. Make sure that you never cut past that or you move it. You can move it, all right? But I mean, if you cut here and here, that's gonna give you, I mean, there's no not very many doors shorter than that. The only time they do that is when they put them on a bathroom stall. So just so you know, but that is ultra uber important. You cannot cut past that guy right there. So go ahead and where's your line at? Okay. You're gonna to wanna to watch the blade. Bring it anyway, okay? Nice clean cut, perfect. Let's get this one a little bit closer to here because it's gonna it's gonna want to vibrate because it's not as thick and sturdy. Watch the blade through the hole there. Look at how nice and clean that cuts it, right? If you cut it with an angle grinder, you're gonna get all kinds of metal like burrs and it's gonna kind of melt it as it goes through. That steel demon makes a nice clean cut, and it'll do that same thing with steel um, of any kind. Okay, so steel demon blade, awesome stuff. I always have an extra one on the truck too in case it gets dull or breaks. But you can see, I mean, that if you if you've ever cut aluminum with an angle grinder, it melts, it melts it into the gears. It just makes a mess. You don't want to do that. Uh, I would also highly recommend you leave the hinge put together. We had already pulled this one apart for some reason, uh, but if you leave the cap, then you only have to make one cut instead of two. Do we have any questions so far? Nice, clean, professional cut with no scarring or burrs. If you do get burrs or you don't have the option to use that circular saw and you have to use something else, you can carry a file, use your file, clean up the edges, move on with your day. All right, identifying the Allen nut and the bearing, making sure to not cut, cut past this. Very important, very easy to find, very easy to see, stands out. Do not cut past this. If you need to make a really short hinge, make two cuts, one on each side. All right, centering the hinge. Perfectly centering the hinge on the gap is ideal. The hinge can have some overhang on the door side only and still operate. Uh, seven eighths of an inch is the, uh, required amount to be mounted on the frame. So you have to have seven eighths of that frame side of the hinge on the frame side. Where does this come into play and why is that important? Because there are a lot of places and a lot of buildings where they put brick or mortar or stone or whatever fancy siding they have on that building all the way right up to the edge. Okay, so that is going to be an extremely important part of the equation to make sure that you know, hey, I don't have enough room to mount a surface mount continuous hinge here. We're going to have to come up with a different option. I'll show you, I think at the end of the, the uh, program, I do have some pictures of that as well, where then you could actually mount a butt style. So instead of them mounting to the surface like this, they actually mount like this. So that way it doesn't have any mounting on the outside or near the trim, it's in the center. The problem that you will run into with that is that it will adjust the opening. Now you're gonna have a quarter inch or so ad added to that opening. So you need to get that somewhere. The only way we were able to do that was that it was a wood door. And so we were able to plane down the backside to allow for that hinge to come in. Uh, that, that will be covered as well. <clears throat> So the hinge will work on an angle. That's one of the things that Steve will teach in his classes that you can mount that hinge practically sideways and it will still work. It doesn't look very good, but it would still work. But that's just showing how sturdy that hinge is uh, and that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect to work and operate. But boy, it sure does look way more professional when every detail is attended to and it looks absolutely perfect.
Hacksaw works and takes longer. Yes, it does. You don't have to use any of these tools that are mentioned. Uh, hand tools work fine. But once again, if you're using hand tools, you're probably not going to get a hinge done in 20 minutes or so. Uh, it, it, that's just all there is to it. But there's nothing wrong with hand tools. Hand tools have worked great. You don't require power. They don't need batteries. It's always actually a great idea to have a hand tool backup in case your tools don't work or you can't charge them on the job. Excellent point. Keith, um, cut both ends or one? Mark, uh, you only cut, you would, okay, so that's a two-part question. Uh, cut both ends or one? In most cases, in 90% of the cases that you run across, you will only have to cut one end. Only make one cut, the less you cut, the better. Make one cut on one end. In some cases where you have an extremely short door or all you ordered was an extremely long hinge and the door is much shorter than that, if your cut from one end, the distance from one end, the edge to that bearing is greater than the distance of where that bearing is mounted, you will need to split the difference because there's two bearings. So if your bearing is here and here, you can't cut past the bearing, okay, on one end. You would need to split the difference. You would need to cut some off of this side and some off of this side, making sure that the bearings are intact. Hopefully that answers your question. They make, oh, yeah, it makes a lot slower, vertical. Okay. All right. Hopefully that answers everybody's questions. If you have more questions, please do post them and I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, let's see here. So this is going to be centering the hinge. Is make sure that this is centered on the center line right there. It doesn't now with select hinge. Can you take a picture or not? Yeah. Okay. With select hinge, you can be over here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just it's weird. You you want it to be as centered as possible. So we want this to be up as high as possible, and then it's centered as high as possible. So you want to go ahead and mark that. Just on here? No. Mark what? Like your, your drill location. That, see that bolt I'm looking at right there? Mark that. This guy? Yes. Center. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm thinking that we could actually use a step bit because it, it does kind of like that other bit, but it does a really nice job of starting out and then drilling. Okay. And then we just drill to that 3 8 line, okay, right there. So a step bit's going to be an awesome option. Uh, it's like pilot drilling your your own hole. So instead of using a larger bit or a smaller bit and then going and jumping up to the three-eighths bit instead, instead of using like a quarter or an eighth and then jumping up, the step bit is already designed to do so. Again, those, uh, those step bits are by Milwaukee. They clip right into the hex mount they have several different options but that's the fastest way i've found to do it it just hogs the material out of there i've tried it all the different ways i've tried select hinges bit it works great on uh, metal or aluminum but it doesn't work very well in wood because it's only fluted on one small end but it's the same idea it's got a small like an eighth inch point and then it expands out to three eighths it works great on steel and aluminum um, aluminum kind of tends to get a little melty, but anything that's thicker than that particular tip of that bit, and it, it just starts to gum up quickly as soon as you get into wood, uh, step bits by far the fastest that I've found. Okay. There's a picture of the center hinge. You can see exactly where it's going to break exactly where the very, very, very center is right here and where it's going to meet with the door. And you can see that we have the door pushed all the way over. Everything is nice and tight. You can see the shim that we had to cut over here. It's maintaining that eighth inch gap all the way around. Everything is looking really, really good. Self-entering bits 
Yes, I have. Yes, Ray. Uh, that's what I was describing. The self-entering bits or self-centering bits. Yeah, they they do. They work really good on steel and aluminum. Um, and the, I think it's in, I think we cover it in here. It works extremely good on that, but it does not work on wood because it doesn't have a flute all the way to get it out. But yes, if you buy that select hinge bit, it works extremely well. I highly recommend it as part of your arsenal. Good point, right? No, I do not have a gap on the hinge side of the door. Attaching the hinge and drilling the holes. Self-tapper screws are self-explanatory. They go in first. Uh, Milwaukee step bit hogs material out of the door for fast pre-drilling. Mark the step bit with tape so as not to over-drill the holes when going through. Uh, countersunk self-tappers go on the frame side of the door. An automatic center punch will help screws from wandering while getting the bolt started. So the automatic center punch, it is still a good idea to come by and center punch those and it will help your drill bit start in the exact center. Otherwise, you'll go to drill it and it'll wander off until it catches the edge and then it'll drill through there and then your hinge wants to do this. Not good at all. You want to make sure everything is centered and an automatic center punch is your best friend. They're called Vix bits. Okay. Set up on self tamper on this side. Number three Phillips head bit. Okay. I'm just gonna answer some questions here. Uh, no gap on the hinge side of the door. No, not in not in any of the cases that I've done. Um, if you need a gap, it would be very difficult because you're gonna have the door stop on one side. I couldn't imagine why you would need a gap there. Uh, part of the whole process is the airbags are shoving the door over and up. So you're shoving over and up, and then your shims bind it. So the binding force of the airbags shoving the door up and shoving the door over against the wall are what keep it in place. Boy, I've installed a ton of these, and I've never had any issues with needing a, a shim on that side. The only way you'd even be able to possibly shim it is you'd have to do it before, and you'd have to cut the shim. So you'd have to pop your shim in before you add the airbags in, add your airbags, then you'd have to cut your shim, make sure that gap stays in there. The only reason I could think you would need to do that is if you had some kind of bolt head or something weird in there that wasn't allowing it to lay flush. But yeah, I, I don't think you need a, a gap on that side. And then uh, they're called VIX bits. Pricey, but very handy. I 100% agree. An impact driver does this. Okay. And so then um, now what I want to do is come to the bottom. Make sure that you have the bottom lined up and put a screw or a self tamper down on the bottom. I even like to use an eighth inch drill bit to pre-drill the self-tapping screws because the self-tapping screws have a horrible tendency of wandering or what will happen when you're trying to drill the self-tapping screw in and you don't have any pre-drilled hole is you'll be putting a lot of pressure you'll be putting a lot of force because you're trying to get that self-tapper to drill and then if you get your angle off or that drill bit skips it buckles and guess what you just put that drill bit and made a big, nasty scar on that door. And if you do it on the other side, that hardened drill bit will hit the glass and you'll break the glass. So always, always highly recommend pre-drilling your holes, any of them, even the self-tappers, before getting started. Make sure that you have it lined up directly on the center. <sighs> Got the center on the center. Feels good. Looks and good. It, because you're at an awkward That's position. That's not the center, is it? No. no. Well, this I don't know. The move, the, move the hinge. Move the hinge. The other way. The other way. That is the center. See it? I guess so. Huh. Or is it? Marking the center line where the door meets the frame before you mount the hinge is a very good idea. So right here, it just so happens that it's marked out on our threshold. But if you can think to do that before, you can still do it after, like we're doing now. You just move the hinge out of the way a little bit, make you a little mark, and then set your hinge back in. Yeah. Well, is it or is it? It is. I was okay. following something else on the door. I'm sorry. So what I would do is get up here somewhere straight where you're going to have a straight shot at putting that in there. 
so it doesn't roll around on you. Just so it doesn't do that. So it doesn't do gotcha. that. Okay. Need another four hands? Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Is it still on the center? Yep. Okay. Good. Just pop all the rest of them in. That's it. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Drilling the door side, uh, the round head self-tapper screw will go in the smaller holes on the door side. So when you f f uh, rotate the hinge over the door, you'll see larger holes that are 3 8 inch diameter, and you will see smaller holes that are probably quarter inch or less. And those are for your pan head self-tapping screws. This is for your pre-test. Those are just there so that you can pop them in, see if the door swings properly, and then drill the through bolts. That is all they are there for. At this stage, once you put those screws in, you have options. You can move it around. Once you drill the through bolts through, there are no more options. You will not be able to move that door around. We will test the swing of the door before permanently fixing the through bolts. So I'm hoping that's all making sense, that you will definitely see a very different kind of screw. There is a pan head screw, which is flat bottomed and dome or round topped. And there is a tapered screw. The tapered self-tapping screws go on the frame side. Right. Okay. So that's a good point. That is a very good point. Okay. So Gary has mentioned that a gap may be needed on the hinge side to close the gap on a double door installation. I find often that the gap between the doors uh, has too much and the latch doesn't go in enough. So that would be the perfect example of when you need to space that door out. When I do double doors, I usually don't put the center bag in to push the door all the way over. I use the pinning that I pin the door in place by sucking it up. Okay. So from the bottom, you place your airbags in the bottom, you place your shims at the top and you put the airbags in the bottom and you raise the door up. That's going to allow you to set that gap now, as opposed to trying to do it later. So that is a good point when the door does not go all the way over to the frame side. Excellent point, Gary. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I do do that and I do address that on a double door installation. Yes. And that's the perfect time to actually center it up. When you raise that door up, usually the get door, the gap will start off small on the hinge or on the, on the hinge side, and it'll get bigger as it comes to the, to meet the other door. And as you press that door up with the airbags and shim it, the shim will hold your consistent line and get that door realigned and recentered so it doesn't drag anymore. And then you bolt it into place and then you can do the final touches on the other door. But yes, excellent. Keeps kicking me out. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, Thomas. Uh, sometimes internet quality is usually the leading factor into technical difficulties. Check your battery. Okay. So now that we've got all of the screws installed over here on the hinge side, we can now move over. This is going to be your test, uh, the way to test this before we actually drill the through bolts. You've got the smaller bolts here. Okay. Let me see one of those. And the flathead bolts are the ones that go into the. And voila. The flathead bolts are going to be the ones that go into these. And then the bigger ones are going to be for the through bolts. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so again, guys, if you can plug your computer into Ethernet, that is going to drastically improve your internet connection. There's no way that your Wi-Fi is anywhere near as fast as being hard-lined in with an Ethernet cable, and um, internet connection is usually the number one trouble with webinars. So make sure your internet connection is good. This will be recorded. I think I'm recording this two different ways. Uh, I'm recording it through exactly what you see on your side through the webinar. And I'm actually recording my screenshot as well, uh, which might actually be a little bit better production when we're done. You guys are more than welcome to watch this when we are through. Uh, as far as CEU credits and stuff go uh, for attending the live class, if you experience technical difficulties, they're going to have to decide that on a one-on-one -on -one basis between Travis, um, Roger, and uh, Derek uh, for whether or not you can get credit for those. I'm sorry if you're attending and it's, and you're having technical difficulties. That's, we're just, it's the nature of the beast. We're groundbreaking, uh, doing groundbreaking stuff. And those are all things that will come in, uh, and fall in line as we move forward. <clears throat> okay. Perfect. Yep. Ready's all set up. Cool. Good. You guys got good internet connections. Good. All right, testing the swing of the door, last chance to adjust, all right? This is it. This is the final countdown right here. Uh, after the screws are fastened tight, the door has the four self-tapping round-headed panhead screws in place. Remove the shims and the airbags to test the door. The time for adjustment is now. Once the through bolts are drilled, there will be no more adjustment. 3 8 drill bit drills all the way through the door. So you cannot use your step bit to drill all the way through. Okay. It just gets you a nice clean. It hogs out the material to allow you to get it to that last diameter so that you can run your 3 8 drill bit all the way through the door because you will have to go all the way through. All right. So now that we have all of the bolts on this side, and the self tappers on this side all the way up this door we can now release the airbags and we'll see if the door swings properly this is the moment of truth okay and you have the key correct yep but we can't really do that until and we'll pull all the shims and everything It just drops that little bit. Moment of truth. Go ahead and uh, unlock and open the door. All right, pull that shim out of the top, that wood bit. Okay. Thing of beauty. Swings properly, sits properly. That's what we're looking for, okay? That's exactly what we want. Everything is out of the way. Okay, we'll adjust the door closer so it closes a little smoother. But other than that, that's exactly what we want. Now we'll just use that, we'll use the step bit to get these, because I think it just works faster and easier. Yeah. On the aluminum, just get them started. If you start to get into this, back off, okay? And then we'll use another bit to go all the way through. I'm already not dead. And that's where our center punch helps. I'm just doing upward pressure. Just go. Go, go, go. I'm afraid to get into that. Go, go, go. Go. come back and we'll clean it out with the 3 8 bit but that's going to get see how much faster that was it's swapping bits out and doing all this other stuff yeah okay you need a center punch there you go yeah. use the center punch they give you those janky ones but they're finger mashers you'll probably want your stool again too but there we go yeah that's a great point the uh, <clears throat> the bits that come or the little center punch things that come with the in the bag of bolts. Yeah, do not use those. All they do is mash your fingers. You'll try and hold it. It's like a it's the perfect size of the hole, and it's got a little 
uh, spot in the middle so you can tap it, but they're only about this long and you are guaranteed to mash your finger every single time you use them. So I highly recommend not doing so. Uh, address a couple more comments and, and things here with uh, double doors. You can also, um, most door, you, it depends on what doors you have, but a lot of doors are going to have an adjustment in that weather stripping on the edge of the door. So you can adjust that out. So even though you see a gap there, once we loosen that and, and allow that to spring out, if you've ever seen one of those doors that has all those springs, either round springs or those big, uh, like, um, pieces of metal that look like a spring that are cupped this way. Uh, those actually are specifically designed to be adjustable on one side, if not both sides. And then usually when we do a door, I bring weather stripping with me and we run new weather stripping. Cause almost if the doors that wore out, it's the weather stripping is probably wore out too. So by the time we add a piece of weather stripping on both sides, I already have that factored into my installation just because we do them so often that it's not a big deal. So even though there's a gap there, by the time we get it done and get that new uh, weather shipping in there, it looks perfect. Uh, have we had a really heavy door and not had, and had the four screws not be enough? If you ever feel that the four screws are not going to supply enough holding force for you to do a door, uh, to do a test swing on a door, add your own self tappers. Uh, almost every single job, I have at least five or six extra screws from the screw pack that comes with the kit to to use on another job. Throw an extra couple set of screws in there. Don't put them in the holes where your through bolts are going to go through. Drill pre drill a separate hole randomly on that hinge as long as it's going to get covered up. Uh, as long as it's going to get covered up, it doesn't matter. You can add 10 self-tapping screws. You can add the hex head self-tapping screws if you want. It doesn't matter as long as you can put the cap on and you're not uh, you know, taking away clearance. You don't want to put a screw that's going to have a head that's going to stick out too far to get your concealing cap over and cover it up so that it can't, it can't click into place. But other than that, add as many self-tapping screws as you want. You're not going to hurt it. Uh, a couple questions as we go. Transfer punch to center drill location of the hole. Um, you can transfer punch to center the location. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you want to you want to center punch the the hole for sure. Um, transfer punch set could be an option. I'll have to check that out. I'm not familiar with that, Mark. Uh, thank you for posting that. Apparently, there's a Transfer punch set, that would be an option to mark the exact center of the hole. I'm assuming it's kind of like what they send you, where it's actually got the diameter of the hole. You put the thing in the diameter of the hole. It sits in the diameter of the hole, and then there's a little nub that will actually make your center punch. That's a great way to do it. Um, yeah, just don't hit your fingers. Yeah, exactly. Will there be more webinars like these uh, in the next coming days? I'm not working right now, and any classes are welcome. Yes, that is all I am doing is putting together webinars. Monday will be social media marketing. Uh, as of right now, it will be hosted through HL Flake, just like this one is. should be Monday at noon Mountain Standard Time. Uh, where do I get the weather stripping from? Uh I don't know if HL Flake has weather stripping or not. That would be a good place to start. Start with HL Flake first. Uh, I I'll have to come up and see where I got that. I I may it may be a more customized um, storefront location uh, like CRL or CL Lawrence. I believe is where I got the last weather stripping. You can actually order it in different lengths, different piles, different thicknesses that fit in that little weather stripping hole. There are a bazillion different options. Um, I will try and get some pictures of what I use and I will post them. If you follow me on Facebook or you're in locksmith nation, uh, I will post those as soon as we get done. So that's weather stripping, uh, longer. So you don't hit your finger. Yeah. A little bit longer. So you don't have your fingers. Good, good. Uh, webinars are coming out. Yes. Uh, with butt hinges, Butt hinges are going to be covered next. You're getting ahead of me, Gary. Don't worry. We'll cover that very next. And that one is a very large oversized door. That one was a nightmare. You guys are, it's going to make your, 
skin crawl when you see this next door that we do this on. We do the exact same thing. Part two of this class is doing it with butt hinges, metal hinges on a metal door on an oversized metal door. Hopefully that answers everybody's questions. Step bit, three eight size marked, tech tip, use a piece of tape and mark it at your three eight setting or the one just before. Uh, installing the through bolts. The secure side is the side with the locking mechanism on the door. Place the round part through of the through bolt facing the secure part of the door. The way to find the secure part of the door is the door with the lock on it, okay? Or the exterior portion of the door. <clears throat> Normally, this would be under the cap uh, to the exterior part of the hinge. For correctional facilities or mental health facilities, mount the Phillips head under the external part of the hinge covered by the cap. Secure the cap with pin and torx tamper-resistant screws. So what that means is, again, you can flip it. You could also alternate each screw so that you have one on each side. Um, but the round head, the way you tell how to mount those screws is the finish of the hinge will match the Phillips head side of the screw. So the Phillips head side will always design to be out. It's not designed to be under the cap. It's designed to be out, except for correctional facilities and mental health facilities where both sides need to be secure. You don't want other people coming in and you don't want who's in to get out. In that case, you can alternate them or you put the Phillips head side on the, on the side of the door, on the secure side of the door under the cap, and then you use pin and torx tamper resistant screws to pin the cap in so that somebody can't come up with a normal Phillips head screwdriver, take the cap off, remove the, the through bolts and remove the door. Anybody have any questions on that? That can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully everybody understands what I'm saying about correctional and mental health facilities, alternating the screws or flipping them to the non-conventional method and using a pin in Torx to secure that cap on. Okay, so here's what it looks like when you look through the hole and you see your through bolts. Make sure they are lined up and straight. Very important part portion of this. Uh, perfectly aligned through bolts ready for a Phillips head bolt. That's what it should look like. You get your screwdriver and you jam it in there and you move it around. Because when you beat that that uh, through bolt through, it's going to want to do this and that and this and that. And if you get one of them cross-threaded, you are going to have a very, very bad day. Through bolts and sex bolts. If the through bolts get cross-threaded, you will have a very bad day. Boy, I'd have that burned into my own brain. Um, making sure that they are as straight as possible before tightening them up. Use a probe or screwdriver. Using a probe or screwdriver is a key part in preventing cross-threading. All right, so you're going to want to make sure that we straighten that out. This is a huge tip. You want to make sure that this is straight. And you get it, use a screwdriver or something to get it straight before you start drilling or trying to screw that in there. Because if you get it cross threaded, it's a royal pain to do, and you've got a lot of leverage and movement like so. Okay, should make sense. Okay, make sure that they are all fully seated. That means when you start to tap that screw in there, if you get it perfectly drilled at 3 8 diameter, the ribs that you will see on the round portion or the sleeve portion of the through bolt are specifically designed to be slightly thicker so that they grab. When you do that, you need to make sure that all of those round heads are flush to the hinge. If a through bolt begins spinning, use vice grips to hold it and using an impact driver on the inside. Uh, if you only have yourself, then you only have yourself. Hit it a little bit with the impact driver, go outside, tap it with the hammer a little bit. You're gonna have the vice grips grabbed onto the round side of the bolt. Tap it with the hammer so that it's going in as you put pressure on the bolt. So you're using the screw force to pull the bolt together and then you're tapping this side to get it to seat in and then go back to the other side, 
impact driver, tap, impact driver, and it will bring it together. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, do not break the bolt. Do not damage the door by over-tightening it or warping it. That is a very, very important part. If you if you use an impact driver on these things, you can easily make a door do this. Okay, It'll wave all the way up and down, and it is bad, bad news. It looks like crap. Unprofessional. If these get stuck, you can put a pair of vice grips on here, or you can try and beat it back in and make sure those ribs uh, grab. If you have two people, or you can grab somebody tapping on this side with a hammer and impact driving the other side with the screwdriver is going to help out a lot. Other than that, just make sure that they're all flush and tight all the way down. And then my favorite is 18 volt impactor driver. The 12 volt doesn't have enough thump. And then a number three bit. Yeah, number three bit is definitely an important part of the equation. You have to have the right bit. If you have, if you try and do it with a number two bit, it's not going. It's just going to strip them out. You're just going to have a bad day. That is what flush looks like. Okay, and this is how far your bolt can stick out. So if you need to add extra self-tapping screws for your test swing, make sure they don't stick out any further than this pan head does. But that is what flush looks like. They should all look exactly like this. Installing the number or installing the two screw cover cap cover caps, uh, showing the installation of the removable cover on the door side. The select hinge continuous hinge has a removable side and a non removable side. The reason they do this is because the hinge lasts for so long that you could actually put a new door in, even if you put a continuous hinge on an opening. And 10 years from now, they want to they have the same opening but the door is failing, somebody broke the glass, the wind bent it, something happened where they wanna get rid of that door. You can actually take that cap off using the, the uh, Allen heads and peel that off and then use your screwdriver, undo all of the through bolts and put a new door in there using this exact same method. So you can put a brand new door using the exact same hinge without having to replace it. So the last part of the equation is getting this block snapped on or the outer bit snapped on. This one has the Allen heads. Make sure you pull those off. Then this should clip on fairly easily. If you need to tap it on, go ahead and do so. This is where if you're in a secure facility or mental institution or correctional facility, you would want pin in torques and pin in torques these down several screws. That way this cap can't be peeled off. And the same with this cap over here. That way they can access this here and just pull the door off. Um, but a two inch or one inch by two inch block of oak wood along with a regular hammer or dead blow hammer is going to be your friend getting this on. It takes a little bit to get it on there. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give it a tap. Wax it out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curved. No. Nope. Nope. Okay, I'll hold this. Okay. If it's easier to get the regular cap. There you go. Please wax. Nice. Okay, just little by little. You gotta smack the crap out of it pretty hard. Yeah. This is also why we use the select hinge continuous hinge, because that piece is extra thick and extra heavy heavy duty. So when you're doing this part with some of the other hinges, it can become bent. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And you can you can pretty much tell when it's flat. Easy. Easy killer. <laughs> then you're probably going to want to get more of an underhand swing to get the bottom of it. You know what I mean? Kind of stand up over it and bring the hammer into it. There you go. 
This one's really funky. Normally, you'd be able to just kind of hit it directly. But see how that piece of oak handles that really nicely? As opposed to all those shims taped together, you'd bust yeah. them all up. <clears throat> all right. Just double check it. Make sure that you can feel. I run my finger all along here and make sure that it's all the way done. Again, if it's a secure facility, you need to do pin and torques, self tappers up and down, line your screws out. I would just put three. Right one two three yeah and then if i were if we were doing that i would mark out in between two of where two of my screws are so you don't go in and hit a screw no. got it okay so that's mounting the cap over the um frame side the frame side is not removable uh, the door side is uh depending on how you get it on there if you can slide the cap off you do not need to replace the cap on the door side. You will always need to replace the cap on the frame side. You will usually have to replace the cap on the door side, but there are some uh, some rare occasions where you can actually just undo the um, <clears throat> Allen heads and it will just slide right up. It'll slide up and then you slide it back down. That answers Carl's question. Uh, Yes, in most cases it will need to be replaced, but there are some cases where it doesn't. Uh, this also comes in, into into play when I go and fix hinges that are improperly installed. If I mean, I boy, how do I say this nicely? Most companies that are dedicated glass uh, companies in the area where I am do not know how to install these hinges properly, and a large portion of my business is going and reinstalling the hinge that they installed later on down the road. Uh, I've had videos where three screws, three self-tapping screws were used on the frame side, no through bolts were used on the door side, and four self-tapping screws that were all stripped out were used on the door side. Absolutely no through bolts were mounted. So peeling those caps off, you can order those caps individually. Uh, so you peel the cap off, and then add all the proper hardware, put the through bolts where they're mounted to be, uh, and then make sure that the the hinge side is mounted the way that it's supposed to be and all of the screws are mounted. I don't know why people do not put all the screws, but every single time I go do a repair on something that somebody else has mounted, they, they do a horrible job of doing it and they leave half the screws out. I don't know what the deal is with it, but they think there's too many, I guess. But one real stiff wind whoosh, and it rips that door open. You're going to need all the screws you can get. All righty. Uh, pivot frame hole cover stickers from professional business products. Uh, these do two things. You can see the hole. That's going to be the pivot hole that's left on the right-hand side. And then you're going to see the cover sticker. Uh, that they make a jelly sticker, and they also make an actual aluminum sticker that's metal. It is awesome. These are so cool. Uh, you're going to brand yourself. Always should be branding yourself whenever you work on any of these doors so you get any of that future work, door operators, door closers, anything else that can go wrong with that door, rekeying, et cetera. You're leaving branding. You're making it look better. You're covering up a hole, and this is just the, by far the most professional way to do this. Uh, select hinge also uh, is they have a patent on the tippet. It is the only one that is mounted uh, for anti-ligature. So this will actually go over the top as a anti-ligature cap. Again, you'll see the pin and torques options here. Uh, anti-ligature is is so that that uh, that would be correctional facilities or mental health facilities where nobody would be able to get floss or string or anything like that over the cap and um you know commit suicide or do do whatever they're trying to do uh that's what the anti-ligature features are for and so far as far as i know last i checked uh select hinge was the only one that had a patent on the tippet so make sure that you provide that to your customers that have those needs the options are there make sure that you offer them as you install the hinge so that they get everything that they need Hazards when dropping the door include chance of scratching or damaging the door, breaking glass, damage to surrounding areas, and items including other glass panels. So when you drop this door, uh, you can scratch it on the ground. You're gonna drop. You're gonna drop it. You can scratch it on the concrete. Um, 
a wind, wind can come up, people, dogs, any of these things are all obstructions and hazards. So when that door's sitting there, just leaning up against whatever it is, or even if it's on saw horses, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, even birds, there's, there's so many things that can happen to that glass and that door when it's not pinned in the, in the position where it needs to be in. You just take so many chances and so much liability with having that door sitting down. That's why I came up with the method that we came up with. Uh, you can damage the surrounding areas. I've had a door sitting there and literally caught it as it was being blown over. Just very fast reaction. You set your door up, a gust of wind comes by, doesn't take too much to tip it over, and literally caught it just before it hit the ground. So wind can blow the door over. Uh, customers can both damage the door by knocking it over, and you can they can get hurt or injure themselves with the door falling on them. That is why we come up with this method, and that is why I like it so much better than dropping the door. It's not just um, it's not just you; it's the door itself and your liability and the people around you. Not to mention your back. I mean, you know, you you are picking this door up off of the ground. You are definitely picking this door up and twisting and moving as you have. Uh, 80, 100, 150 pound door in your hands. You're going to pick it up. You're going to twist. You're going to move. You are asking for a back injury when you do that. Um, not recommended to do that by yourself in any way, shape, or form. Always have two people when you do that. Uh, but again, this is why this, this method is coming up. All right, I'm going to answer some questions here. Uh, have had broken glass once. Not a good day. Yep, I haven't broken any glass yet. My employee's broken one, one panel of glass. Uh, knock on wood. I haven't done it yet, but we'll see what happens in the future. But I don't even see how you could break the glass other than, like you said, that that if one of your tools hits the glass, you can break it. Uh, Might have missed something from my understanding. This is the frame side of the hinge. The only thing stopping someone from unscrewing the hinge from the frame is the cap. Yeah, the hinge side or the frame side of the cap is not removable. They would have to use tools and it is really difficult to get off. You would have to have a heavy duty screwdriver and pry bar. And even then, if you put those tippets on there, I don't even know if you could get that, get anything in there to start the prying action. It's like peeling open a can. It would, it would be the equivalent of trying to open up a tin can without a can opener. Um, that's why we consider that the more secure side. Or again, if you are at a correctional facility or mental health facility or an extra secure facility, such as a government facility, um, put your pin and torques on the, on the frame side too. That would be a, a excellent option for that. And if you want to make it even worse, you could do pin and torques, or if you don't have security screws, you can put a regular self-tapping screw in and then use a drill bit and drill all of the threads out. So there's nothing to grab onto. You can make your own security screws that way. Uh, you're just never going to get them out, short of cutting them. Oh, lots of questions now. Okay. Hopefully that answered your question, Gordon. Um, you can do pin and torques on there for sure. If you so desire, that's a good way to keep it more secure. Came a bit late, but can you tell me the name and model and the number of the hinge you just installed? SL57. SL, that's Sam Larry SL57. Uh, there will be a recording, so you can watch the recording when we're done, too, if you want to catch the beginning. Carl. The only thing that is attaching the hinge to the frame are the self-tapping screws. Yes, correct. Um, you can also, I have seen one where all of the self-tapping screws were actually stripped out so bad. Um, you can still save that, believe it or not. It's a lot of work. You're going to have, I charge far more to fix one of those than doing a completely new installation, but you can reuse the hinge if it's a good quality hinge, but you can actually pull the hinge down. All of the screws that are on the self-tapping side on the frame side that are stripped out, you can actually install nut desserts in there, and then you can install quarter by twenties and that sucker ain't going anywhere. So there are still a lot of ways to mess up a continuous hinge installation. And I have seen a ton of them because I don't know what it is about glass places, but man, they just do not do very good installations on these uh, for, from what I've seen. So I've had to fix where every single one of them was stripped out. And the only option is to either move it or re-drill holes, but then that messes your alignment up. 
but adding nut zerts, adding those nut zerts in there. If you haven't seen a nut zert or a blind nut or don't know what it is, look it up on Google after we get done. And they are cool. They actually go into that hole. You crimp, crimp it in place and it gives you like five or six threads. It's basically like putting a nut behind the door blind. Uh, they were installed one, but from the pictures, it didn't look very difficult to pull that off, but I take your word for it. Yeah, Gordon, if you got, if you have, um, if you have concerns, then add the pin and torques or security screws on top of it. That's, that's the method behind that. Uh, if you have the option to add a through bolt, you could add a through bolt. Uh, it, it's going to be up to you, but they are pretty difficult to remove and it would take quite a while. I would say it would take at least 10 or 15 minutes to get that thing peeled off of there and undone. By then you're going to have, you know, you're, you're going to be using power tools. People are going to notice you're going to be, you're going to be using a lot of stuff that's very loud and noisy. It's not a covert entry. All right, think outside the box. Uh, changing a center hung concealed mounted door closer to an outswing door with easy to replace external mounted closer. All right, so hopefully everybody's following me on that. But if you have seen a door that swings both ways, psh, both in and out, they're very popular on hotels, uh, ski resorts, that kind of stuff. It swings in and out, and then your closer is mounted in the ceiling or in the header or in the floor. It swings in and out and swings from the center. Uh, I hate doing those. And the company that I was working for hates replacing them every five years. So we went to a external exit mount, uh, flush mount SL57 with a conventional closer that any of their guys can install. And so we can show you that here. This is Wayne here with Tri-County Locksmith Services. I'm going to give this a quick pause. Uh, this is about a seven minute video. I'm going to go grab uh, something to drink and if and take a take a little break here. This is not a necessity, not a necessary part of the video, but it's very, very cool. And it is very, very educational to kind of get your brain thinking outside the box on how versatile these can be used. But I'm going to take just a little bit of a break here. I believe after this, we're going to do a metal butt hinge installation as well. There's a second portion of the class. It's nowhere near as long as the first portion, but it does show you how to do metal butt hinges. And today we're going to be taking a center hung concealed door closer that has a center bearing and a center mounted closer up here. And we're going to adjust this and we're going to bring it up here. We're going to mount a continuous hinge flush on the outside. And then we're going to mount a conventional closer on the inside. So we're actually going to convert this from a double swing door that swings both ways to one that only swings out. Anytime you do this, you want to check with your local fire code, your fire marshal and building inspector. But for the most part, this will be a really nice solution. It should last a lot longer. You can see these closers are all blown out. So we're going to fix that. Here you can see that we begin the process. We're going inside and your center hung or concealed door closers will usually have a side arm or a rear arm attachment. There will be three, there will be between two and three Allen head screws that hold a block onto the arm that is attached to the door where the block slides onto the square pivot for the center hung door closer. We now have the door pulled. This is a scenario where it would be advised you will have to pull the door down. This will not be a scenario where you can just pin the door in place. You can pin the door in place after you get the door pulled. However, with this scenario, we found one of the doors actually had the concealed closer that was not even attached. It was hanging on by a thread and it quite literally almost came down on us when we pulled that particular plate off of there. So it is always advised to remove the concealed closer and the bottom bearing so that you don't have any trip hazards or any other kind of potential hazards moving forward later on. We now have the door moved out of the way and Matt is going to start putting the continuous hinge on the frame side. Notice always the frame goes or the, the continuous hinge 
frame side is always the small self-tapping screws. I go over this many times in the class that I teach. However, even so, on this very building, not these doors, but a separate set of doors, another so-called glass company or door specialist installed the exact same hinge and the exact same door closers that we're installing. They just managed to install them backwards. They installed the self-tapping screws on the door side and then refused to put through bolts on the frame side. It never goes that way. It loses a tremendous amount of strength and it loses all of the properties that make it a quality product. You have to put the through bolts through the door on the door side. That is the strongest way to do it. So we have the door mounted with two people. It's very, very easy, very, very nice, very convenient, and it matches up well. We're probably drilling the through bolts through now. Again, we just set the door aside, get the bearing cut out of the way. I used an angle grinder to cut the bottom pivot bearing as it was seized to the floor. We tried to unscrew it and thread it out. It was not having any of that. This having a high corrosive environment. This is a ski resort company and there is lots of moisture and snow and salt and chemicals used in this area. We got the floor cleaning chemicals on the inside and the salt and whatnot that goes on the sidewalk outside to melt the ice to keep people safe. So we have a very, very large amount of corrosion and just bad stuff going on here so we did the best we could we had to cut the bottom pivot out remove the top closer we're now doing it on the other side as well door is now out of the way we did have to this side the side where we now have the continuous hinge mounted has flush bolts so we just used a round drill bit instead of the usual square hole hard to make a square hole you could do it if you needed to. However, I see no issues in using a round hole to be able to reset that. So we redrill the flush bolt top and bottom so that it can maintain security. And now we're working on mounting the continuous hinge on the opposing door. The way the doors lock together is not going to change in any way, shape or form that because both doors are being moved out together. You would not be able to mount a continuous hinge on a double door setup like this if you were only doing one side the doors will no longer be. Here we have Matt drilling. So I'm going to pause the video for one sec. Uh, Mark has asked, when drilling through bolts uh, from the outside all the way through, what about angle variance? Yeah, I mean, no matter what, you're. it's going to be very difficult to drill perfectly straight, but there's not really a jig and there's not really any way to get those holes uh, aligned on the inside. The only way that I've been able to do it is just, you just have to try and drill that as straight as possible. Um, there's just simply so many through bolts that it's really not going to matter. And the only thing that you're really going to hurt or damage if you get a severe angle is it's just going to be difficult to get that screw to line up. Uh, but you're, you're, you're just going to have to work on your drilling technique and you're going to have to force yourself to just drill as straight and true as possible. Watching Matt here, this is the actual process, and this is why I attached this video into the webinar, so you can watch and see how he drills these through bolts directly through the door. So that is actually happening right now. Um, and tool guide, uh, a couple other questions were asked when installing these on a residential door, how do you get past the uh the door frame or do you just remove it so you can remove portions of the trim and then reinstall them after it's installed or you can rip that piece of trim if there's glass or something in the way you could install the through bolts like you could miss a through bolt or two i wouldn't uh recommend missing too many but there's so many on a select hinge and it would be a residential door that if you had a pane of glass go where you needed to mount a through bolt you can simply bypass it uh, and just not mount that bolt. If you have clearance issues on the frame side of the door, then you could go ahead and talk about options. If it's a residential door, it might be wood. You could plane it down. Instead of mounting the surface mount SL57, you could mount a butt style or frame style mount where it would actually go into the frame. It actually doesn't mount 
to the outer side of the outside of the frame or the outside of the door, it's completely mounted, uh, concealed. So hopefully that answers most of the questions that we had here. Uh, just moved to cold weather area. Any tips for gloves? Yeah, we're wearing gloves. We're at the ski resort. This is like the coldest day of the year. Uh, Milwaukee makes nice gloves. I, I, I can't work with gloves hardly. So for me to wear gloves, I, I wear the thinnest mechanic style gloves that you can possibly wear. And this place was actually so cold that even having my Milwaukee gloves on or mechanic style gloves, I still had to buy uh, hot packs that went down in the glove and you mount, you actually put that heat pack, those hot hands on the top side of your hands and it warms the blood up before it gets to your fingers. So tricky, couple tricky things for working in super cold environments, but that I am definitely accustomed to. Angle. Penetrating through with a three inch drill bit. Everything is done with cordless tools. Makes it very, very nice and convenient. We also added Norton. I believe they were 1600 series door closers on the inside. So we changed from a center hung concealed mounted closer to a externally mounted exposed door closer. It seemed to be the long-term solution for these high traffic doors. They have replaced the center mounted closers and bearings twice before and wanted a more long-term solution. My personal opinion, select hinge guarantees 63 million opens or some number close to that. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but they guarantee a lot of opens on their openings. So that's why we switched it to that. You can see there's the top, gone i posted i showed a picture of the bottom bearing being cut and gone and then this is the area after we're done i take pictures to show that we are cleaning up after ourselves i always take pictures to make sure there's no aluminum shavings anywhere and that we document that that way if it ever comes back that somebody got hurt slipped injured uh got stabbed little kids get into into shavings and things like that this creates a lot of hazardous environments so make sure you document that the job was done right done well and cleaned up afterwards i post these all in my invoice that i send directly to the customer via quickbooks and i also make notes there is no hesitation and no problem proving this later thanks for watching Okay, those are all extremely good points. And that is definitely, this is one of the new additions to the class. That video right there was not in the old class. So if you've taken this class before, I always reevaluate and add things to these. And that is one of the best tips that you can have right there. Uh, taking pictures of your work and then sending it in your invoice. If you do electronic invoicing or just keeping a cloud file, make sure that you show that you clean up this these things make a gigantic mess there is wood or aluminum and metal and all kinds of nasty stuff all over the place so you make a huge mess doing these um, making sure that you clean that mess up making sure that you're not damaging property or making sure that little kids or dogs or pets walking by don't get metal or aluminum in their feet paws etc those are all very very important details taking documented proof and pictures the customer makes it makes you look so professional when the customer hires you and you go out there you talk it over you say all right we're going to do it and then if they're not there or not able to come show them the job physically if they're not able to stand there with you and you're not able to walk through exactly what you did it's great to send pictures or even just a little 30 second video hey look the area is cleaned up the door works nice everything's closing really well this is the stuff that just separates the pros from the Joes. That is the stuff that burns your brand, yourself, your company, and your image 
into that customer's brain and it will never ever come out of there if you take those extra steps. One more thing that I wanna add to that too is every time you do one of these doors that has glass, take some glass cleaner, wipe that door down inside and out, get rid of all the fingerprints and stuff that you put on there during the installation and you are going to shine like a rock star. When they see you pull that glass cleaner out and clean that door and it looks cleaner than it ever has in the last 10 years, you are already on your way to being the person who's going to get a ton more work. I've had that happen. That very job got me, uh, we did we did like eight doors on that particular location. So, uh, and more to come. They, they loved what we did so much that we're going to be doing more. And this was a location where they hired the glass company and I showed them exactly the differences. Look at what we did and look at what they did. And ours was a hundred times better because of these tips. Uh, one more outside the box is a walk-in freezer repair. Nope. Oh, no, that link's not going to work. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, we did do a walk-in freezer. So just so you guys know, um, <clears throat> wow, I don't know why that link didn't work. Um, but we, we mounted one of these on a walk-in freezer and basically the hinges had broke, the door fell off and the restaurant said, we're either going to lose $10,000 worth of food or you, you're going to fix the door. They didn't have anybody else to call. The refrigeration companies didn't know what to do. They couldn't touch it. Uh, one other company said they could get it, but they had to order parts cause they're custom hinges. So I said, uh, here's my price and I can fix it now today. Keep two of these select hinges on your truck. Just keep two of them on the truck. You'll sell them. The main selling point is that you have them, you have them now, you can fix it, and you can fix it in an emergency. Or back to the uh, very first case where I said I had a wrong hinge ordered. Um, <clears throat> it sa That saved my butt. Having that saved my tail for sure, big time. But yes, I did mount this on a walk-in freezer. Make sure there's no glycol lines or any kind of lines in the door or the frame when you go to do it, but it, it works just the same. Uh, I have also installed them on bathroom stall doors where they were just getting vandalized to the point that the they, they couldn't come up with anything that would stay. And I put that on there and it's still there to this day. They have not managed to destroy it yet. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. All right, job complete. Check the door for any issues like alignment door closers. Always be ready for an upsell. New Adams right lock mechanism, lock cylinder, thumb turns, open lock indicators, uh, any of this stuff, add this to your sale. Why not? You're already there. Get the maximum you can out of it. Um, if people are concerned about pricing, uh, I believe these, these, these are just some really, really rough numbers. Okay. But normally I think the, the basic select SL 57 hinge is about 125 bucks. I sell them installed for $650 and I sell them like hotcakes. That is one of our biggest profit uh, <clears throat> items that we sell. I mean, that's, you know, that's 525 bucks, pure profit into your pocket because you had it on the truck. You can fix it now and it's fixed permanently. Um, that's, those are the kind of numbers. And that's why the, the, the scammer guys are not going to have this stuff on their truck. You know, the, the stuff, that that those that the scammer outfits are going for is the easy money. This is some hardcore technical stuff that when done right really solves the problem and really just nets you a whole lot of cash. So th those are just some numbers. You have to figure out your own numbers for your own area, but that's what I'm getting. And I do not get any pushback on it whatsoever. If we bid it for a double door, I'll usually do them for about 1200 bucks. But that's, I mean, that's, it's good, good money. What do you drive? A uh, 72-inch SL57 won't fit in your NV200. I drive an F350 pickup truck, or uh, yeah, truck with a utility body. So I have eight feet in the back. I have eight feet of solid room. And then my other service vehicle is a ambulance where I can put whatever I want to in there. Um, the 83-incher should fit in a conventional van, uh, even if you lay them up along the uh, the runway or whatever along the bottom, you should be able to fit them. If you have a full size, like a Ford uh, um, Transit or a Envy, they should fit. You should be able to find a spot. If nothing else, keep them at the house. Keep them in your garage. Keep them in your shop. Keep them where you can access them in a in a non male fashioned uh, 
order. So basically what I'm saying is have it at your house. So even though you don't have it right on the truck right with you, you can go back to the house. You know, even if it's a 20 or 30 minute drive or even an hour, go get it, pick it up, put it on, boom, you're done. All right, we're getting to lots of questions. Okay, I uh, still have glass cleaning stuff in my truck back when I did that. Yep, glass cleaner is a must. I have glass cleaner on every single job. Do you advertise as a repair because I have never had a call because of hinges? That is a great question, Joshua. Um, I started a separate uh, Google listing in a separate business called TC Door and Glass. For some reason, people did not think that a locksmith did storefront door servicing. And I guess a lot of them don't. But I started a separate business that is part of my DBA. So it is Tri-County Locksmith Service DBA TC Door and Glass. And I have a completely separate address and a completely separate filing with the Secretary of State and a completely separate Google listing that advertises TC Door and Glass. And that's where I get a lot of my glass work from. I also just tell people every time I do a rekey or every time I do a door closer or anytime I touch a door in any way, shape or form, I tell that customer, we do full door service work. I can replace the glass. I can replace the frame. I can replace the door and the frame. I can replace the hinges. I can install a door operator, electronic ADA compliant door operator. I can replace your door closer. I can do anything that this door needs. We can do it. Call me. And the number one reason that I get these calls are the stickers that I leave on the door. The sticker that you saw that goes on the door, um, to cover up that hole, I put them on my regular doors for my regular customers too. You just put that little jelly sticker there, push pull stickers, any of that stuff. It's a phone number in front of the customer when they have a problem. It's the first thing they call and that's how I get that type of business. Hopefully that answers your question, Joshua. Uh, hopefully that answers the second question with the 72 inch SL57 and an NV200. That is the little mini one, huh? You know, you might even, well, Here's a here's a thought for you Joshua. If you could if your van has a roof rack, get a piece of PVC pipe and mount it on the roof rack as long as you need your hinge to be. Then you can order your continuous hinge. You'll probably only be able to keep one in each tube, but you can keep that mount one of those twist ends on the back of it and then it can be longer or as long up to the front of your vehicle as long as it's not overhanging you won't need a rag but you can put that pvc pipe in there and you can carry your hinge around on top of the truck in that pvc pipe hopefully that makes sense uh we're getting to questions i think outside the box install receiver hitch and put a small trailer yeah you could sure do that um Keep them on the roof rack. Uh, think PVC pipe. Yep, that's okay. We're thinking along the same lines. I wasn't trying to steal your idea. I'm just moving through the questions as they come. Uh, thick. Be very careful if there's a panic bar on the door. Be careful not to drill where the panic bar attaches to the door. The frame skip through. Yeah, okay. So if there's a push, if there's a push bar, a panic bar, or any kind of other push pull hardware mounted on that door, you do not have to put that through bolt through. Do not put that one through. If the through bolt is going to come through and hit other hardware, do not mount that one. It is not going to make a bit of difference, both for security, integrity, strength, any of that. Those through bolts are so many of them and they're so strong. You're not going to hurt anything doing that. Uh, I was thinking PVC pipe as well. Might want to toss in a decent pack. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. Installing the hinge invalidate certification of a fire rated opening because of this field modification. Whew, that is a very good question. You would need to talk to the fire marshal. Uh, anytime you work on any kind of fire door, you need to talk to the fire marshal. If you're going to do what I just did, which is take a double swing, double way door and block it off and make it a single entry so that it's only an outswing door. You need to talk to the fire department. You need to talk to the fire marshal. You need to talk to whoever you need to talk to and get that approved before you go ahead and do so. They're the only ones. You need to have a local person who you've locally talked to and locally brought out to the facility or shared pictures with and get it in writing. Get it in an email. Do not just say, hey, is this okay? This is my plan. No, bad times. Do not do that. 
type it up, send some pictures, send it to the fire marshal, send it to the building inspector. If you have somebody who's a fire door inspector, send it to them too. get all three of them to agree. Yes, this is okay. I believe that the select hinge continuous hinge is approved to do, to be mounted on a fire door possibly. Okay. Do not just, you have to, you have to, do every single job with your own research, but I believe that they are. And here's why, because when you drill a hole, there's a certain size hole that you can drill up to. And once you surpass that, then it voids the fire label on the door and the frame. So you need to, you need to really check your local laws and local listings. But I believe that the holes for the mounting screws and the through bolts are small enough that it does not violate that depending on where you are. Every single state is different. Every single county is different. Every single fire marshal is different. Every single fire door inspector is different. If you catch them on a bad day, it may not fly. If you catch them on a good day, it may fly. All I can tell you is to triple check with three different people, fire inspector, fire door inspector, building inspector, and fire marshal, and get it all back in writing. Moisture management, condensation buildup, not necessary for the hinge, but I've done this for other purposes. Uh, okay, perfect. Good. Moving on. If I missed anybody's question, please repost it. We got a flurry of questions going on right there. Hopefully I answered almost all of them. Ta-da! Here we are. Boom. And then you can see you can see off to the right where we had to paint that hinge and then paint the rest of the fr frame to, to blend it. We came back and we polished that in and, and blended it together a little bit. But this is what the door looks like after it's been installed. It actually, I think it looks cleaner, you know. So if people want to ask, hey, what does it look like? You know, you're changing stuff around. I've put these on some of the fanciest hotels in Aspen and Snowmass, and they love it. They actually like the look of it better. All right. Thank you for attending part one. Uh, Josh Pothers from Toronto Webworks always helps me out set these courses up. He is a definite driving force that helps me set these webinars up. Uh, special thanks to see Steve Pate from Select Hinge. He's the one that helped me, uh, or I, he's the one that helped approve this class. I built the class, sent it to him. He approved it. He also uh, joined the very first webinar that we put, set up for this and uh, gave his blessing on it. So thank you to him, Tyler J. Chama, Tyler J. Thomas from Locksmith Reference. Always helps me edit and spell check and do all that fun stuff with these webinars. So he definitely has a hand in this as well. Check out locksmithreference.com. Check out TLA, Texas Locksmith Association, HF Flake. Travis Howell is the one that's contacted me to put this webinar on, and he's the one that uh, house, you know deals with the main event, uh, all of the food, the training, the education. Travis is the guy behind all that stuff. Uh, join Wayne's Lock Shop today. This full-length video will be available there. So, yes. Um, all right, Wayne's Lock Shop. There you go. Exclusive access to training and how to videos like this. This stuff will be there. All of these webinars will be there. All of them forever. Okay. All this stuff is going to go there. That's what it's for. Locksmith reference, select hinge, Toronto Webworks, HL Flake, McDonald Dash, International Key Supply, HE Mitchell. Check all these guys out. Powerhouse, tons of stuff. Uh, free ground freight with $100 order. Uh, orders under $100, flat rate, $9.95 ground rate. Definitely, definitely good stuff. Uh, for CEUs in Texas, you're going to contact Travis. Uh, Travis Howell with HL Flake. Uh, they should. Travis, do you want to put your email up there? Um, and then Derek, do you want to put your email up there for CEUs for North Carolina? All right, part two, metal door butt hinge installation. Same concept applies to installing a hollow metal door uh, to the hollow metal door. I'm actually going to take one break right now. I'm going to give everybody five minutes. We are, oh no, what happened? We started at three and it is 540. So we've been doing this three, four, five, about an hour two hours and 40 minutes. I'm going to give everybody a five minute break. This isn't really the halfway point. This is like the last quarter. So just keep that in mind. We're at the last quarter here. If you need to use a restroom, grab a drink or beverage or whatever it is you need to do. Uh, we will rejoin in five minutes. I will also take this time to answer any questions. I will still be here 
ask any of your questions now. If you want to ask questions about vans, uh, storage, uh, screws, any of that fun stuff, drill bits, tools, go ahead and ask it now. I will answer those questions and we will resume the class in five minutes. Hmm. Tips for Duranautic paint for finish work. Uh, they actually sell a Duranautic paint. I found it at Ace Hardware. I will try and find um, some video or a, a picture of it. I can't remember the manufacturer, but let me see if I can find it. But yeah, they actually make two different finishes in Duranautic paint. They actually make like the lighter brown and they make the darker brown one. So there are actually some really cool options. And I got like eight cans of that stuff. It is awesome. It is very durable. It looks extremely nice. And um, it will be it will be good. Uh, let me see if I can find the Duranautic paint first. Images. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, CRL makes some. So CRL, CR Lawrence makes a Duranautic paint. That is not the one that I have used in the past. But I don't even know why they would have that at low or at uh, at the hardware store, but they do. Uh, it looks like C.L. Lawrence is the only one. Oh, there it is right there. All right. So mm, let me see if I can get a link to this. Okay. So A E R V E. Oh, A-E-R-V-O-E, -E. 1857 anodized paint is the stuff that I have. Copy. I'm going to see if I can get this into the webinar. Ah, connection problem. Okay. That is the brand of paint. Let me see if I can get it to do... Uh, I'm going to need to go back to get the link. Copy. There you go. That's the link. Um, but yeah, that, that, that stuff, that paint has saved my tail many a times. I definitely recommend it. All right. So we're going to go back through questions. Paint. Uh, Gordon, hopefully that answers your question. I hope I didn't miss this, but what about residential door frames and hinges do you remove the trim yes you can remove the trim uh it's up to you it's it's not often that i would install them on a residential location because the price is so much i mean and it doesn't get used that much the whole point of a uh, continuous hinge is that it's an oversized over abused door in most cases it's either a extremely high traffic area or it is a extremely heavy door and those usually don't apply to the residential application sometimes they do this would work in that application but it's going to take a lot of extra work and a lot of extra time and a lot of extra money to be able to do that so yes you can install them on residential locations i have i've done it specifically for oversized doors some people in aspen think that they need a four inch thick door and uh you know it needs to be 11 feet tall and, you know, six feet wide. I don't know why, but yes, we have installed them on very obnoxious doors. Have I installed a full door latch protector? I have them, Keith. I have one in the shop and that will be one of the videos that I'm going to be doing probably over this shutdown. <clears throat> I'm going to put it over my shop door. 
Um, so I have not installed a full door latch protector yet, but I have one and I will be doing it soon. So if you follow me on Facebook, you or you're in Locksmith Nation, um, or I may even be able to post it on uh, HL Flake's face, Facebook page. Uh, that will be in the future. So keep that in mind, Keith, and stay tuned. Yes, we will be doing that soon. Are you still busy with the COVID-19 on the go as well as precautions we're taking? Yes. Uh, actually, last week was extremely busy. Um, I kind of almost wish I had more time to kind of dedicate to these webinars, but uh, most of the other locksmiths in the area are elderly or older, and they are uh, not working. Um, and so I am. Uh, precautions, every single job, every single time, hand sanitizer before I get out of the truck, brand new pair of gloves before I get out of the truck, heavy duty spider gloves. They're black. They actually work way better than latex ones or, or the like the clear ones um, or vinyl ones. They actually work really, really nice. And uh, Lysol wipes, Lysol the door down, uh, bleach in a spray bottle will work too. Before I even do anything, before I pull out any tools, we spend the time cleaning. We clean the surface down, work on the door, do whatever it is that we need to do. Most of the work that I've been doing has actually been locking up doors for hotels and restaurants that haven't been locked in 20 or 30 years or ever for that matter. So flush bolts are jammed up. They don't even, they're broke. They don't even know how they work, let alone have keys for them. So that's what I've been doing over the last uh, week or two is really just kind of shutting down and buttoning the town down. Um, and, and yeah, I've still been going. Uh, Colorado has been, they have placed a place in shelter law in place. And um, uh, except for necess necessary businesses, I consider this a necessary business because what are the human needs? Food, water, shelter. Guess what goes with shelter? Security. So I'm considering it a necessity. Uh, I have not gotten any complaints so far. Uh, I will deal with any legal precautions or, or anything that comes with that. If, if we do get pulled over or asked to stop, then I'll stop. But as far as I can tell right now, if one person is out there working to shut down a building so that 10 people don't have to be there to man it and secure it, we're actually helping the problem, not causing more problems. Uh, but gloves, hand sanitizer, and Lysol are, those are, those are your friends right now. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'm not warm, not hot, not sick in any way, shape or form. Uh, even one of the jobs that we had was locking up an old folks home. I mean, this was a, this was the, the last step to hospice and these people are on their very, very last thread. And, uh, if anything got in there, it would be a devastating event. Uh, but these people were actually escaping. They were getting out. Um, and people were coming in and the facility was not secured. People were ordering food and stuff and people would come in. So it was, it was definitely a very, very, uh, important job, you know, close to me to get that shut down because these are people's loved ones. And if anything got in there, it would, it would be ultra devastating. So yes, I have been working, but I do think I'm helping solve some of the problems, uh, as opposed to being out there and spreading them around, at least at this point. Was the door closer on the full door a surface mounted closer or an overhead concealed offset arm closer? I have done both. The one in the video that we just watched was a concealed closer at the center of the door. I removed that and put a conventional externally mounted closer on the inside. I have done the same thing with the arm mounted closer as well. But normally if there's an arm, it's not technically a center mounted door. It's actually an offset door that uses pivots. So you just rob all that junk out of there, get it off of there and mount a conventional closer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. A short version, Wayne's link for anyone wanting it. Good. Thank you, Mick. Nice. We are allegedly allowed to be up and running in Houston. We are deemed an essential service. Yeah, you have to check your own local laws and areas. But that, if I got pulled over and asked why I'm out, that would be the exact response. Is there, what are basic human needs? Food, water, shelter, security. We are providing security for people's shelter, their dwelling, and helping solve the problem. Uh, I'm also limiting what I'm trying to do for emergencies and not just random stuff. 
All right. Uh, we've actually given them more than five minutes. It's been about 10 minutes, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully everybody is back. Please go ahead and make a post that you are still here. Whew. This one should, we should be wrapping up in about 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, we'll try and go through this. You've got all the basic concepts. We're just going to apply those same concepts to a metal door and a butt hinge. Here, 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 here. Woo. Look at all those comments. Yeah. That's what we like to see, guys. Yes. Get her done. All right. Let's get her done right now. All right. Metal door butt hinge installation. Same concept applies as the hollow metal door frame. Uh, other challenges to include oversized doors. Simply too heavy for one person to lift and place or move. Uh, this this portion of the class will cover concrete filled frames and how to mount those screws in there. Definitely something you need to know. Uh, this will be covered in the demonstration. Okay. Same problem. How much did this hinge cost? $25 hinge cost them $600 worth of work because of service calls and return trips. Garbage. Throw it away. Throw it away. You don't need it. Don't need it. All right. Oversized doors. Oversized doors. Hollow metal door with heavy concrete filled frames. Perfect candidate for this method of cutting the hinges. Do not ever have to drop the door. Look at this door. This is not Photoshop. This is a gigantic door. You can see the um, the ratio uh, as to how long this door is based off of the doorknob that's mounted on here. Okay, and look at the atrocious gap on the right side of the door. This is ludicrous. Aloha, keep up the great work. Oh, we got uh, somebody from Hawaii. All right, cool. Very good, Leo. Uh... Let's see, back to the first picture of the class. These hinges have been replaced three times. Hinge doctor was used many times as well, only to have them fail. The door is so bad, it will no longer close. This is a perfect candidate for a continuous hinge to solve their problems. Fix it once and be done with it. Look at the size of the gap. That is darn near, th that's three-eighths of an inch. Okay, three-eighths of an inch gap. That is ludicrous. That is ludicrous. Okay, it's pulled that hinge apart that much. And this is the third set of hinges. They do this all the time. They've been doing this to this door for 10 years. Just replace the hinges, hinge doctor it, and move on. Uh, you guys are still with me? Okay. Change and change. Okay. All right. Uh, made it back. Okay, good, 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 good. Here's the other side of the door. It will not even shut. It is hanging over at least a quarter inch on the outside of the frame. Completely ridiculous. All right, cutting the hinges. Installation starts with cutting the hinges to length. The Diablo Steel Demon 7 and a quarter inch saw blade, 18 volt Milwaukee cordless drill is perfect for smooth, clean cuts. You will notice the cut at the end will literally come apart. Make sure you're not cutting past the bearing and the aligned screw head. We've gone over that already. Just hammering it home. All right, so we already got our measurement. We're actually going to get this cut first. Um, we got to wait for some people to come out of here, so we got to kill some time. Diablo Steel Demon Blade. It's going to cut through the aluminum, steel, anything you need to just nicely. You'll also notice that I have the rubber band still on here. We did not separate it like we did before and have to make two separate cuts. We'll only make one cut on this one because it's all rubber banded together and nice and neat and put together. Uh, 78 is our measurement, and as always, let's take a look at the bearing. <clears throat> this is your bearing. Do not cut the bearing. Can't cut. Can't cut past. Can't cut past the bearing. You need to cut from anywhere from here up. You'll notice when you get your cuttings, the two pieces will slide away from each other. This is what holds everything together. So you can move this bearing, but you need to be aware of it. Go ahead. Finger safety glasses, gloves. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there you go. That's what happens when they start to get dull. That blade's getting really, really dull. Um, <clears throat> just replace the blade, brand new blade, and it'll work. I usually keep them for six months to a year. Um, but that's how you can tell. That's the kind of cut it's going to make when your blade gets dull. And then see, pull the rubber band off of that. See what happens if you don't with, know where that bearing is? It just falls apart. Yep. See that? It's going to come apart because that bearing actually fuses those together. That was one of the things that we did get out of the class there. But, nice. Uh, yeah. Cool. There you go. Perfect example of why you cannot pa cut past the bearing. That will happen. That will be your hinge. No good. Okay. Tool list is the same for the aluminum store front door. Shouldn't need to go over that again. Hinge doctor demonstration, uh, temporarily fix the door as a fast on the spot fix until you can order the correct parts to fix the, fix the problem. The gap we have here, I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration of the hinge doctor. Uh, we've got a giant gap, I mean, look at that. We can practically put that wrench in there. Um, so I'm gonna show you the big ball bearing. We don't get a chance to use this very much, so I'm gonna show you how it works on this. The real fix for this door, this is just a, a temporary fix, okay? Uh, it's a great fix, and it's nice to have this in your bag, and it'll get them by for a while. The real fix is doing the select hinge continuous hinge on this door because it's oversized, and three hinges is never going to hold it. But I wanted to get the demo out there, so I haven't had a chance to really use. See, it's brand new and shiny. I haven't even had a chance to use the ball bearing hinge doctor. That goes on there. You can use the wrench. Let's take a look and make sure you get a good uh See how that gap is there. Got it? Yep. So this door does not shut. Okay. Okay. We're going to crunch. Okay. And already we've got the door shut. I'm going to hit it on the middle one. Do not adjust the bottom. Again, do not adjust the bottom. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to, that's as much leverage as I have with that. I'm also going to hit it with the door itself. And we really close that gap up. Right? Really closing that gap. have a select hinge at all times so this is a great solution for this particular application for now just again one hinge doctors are an absolute essential need if you're going to do any kind of door work uh, also available through hl flake you can get the whole kit I highly recommend it. I use them almost every day and I charge $25 every time I pull them out of my tool bag. It adds a tremendous amount of uh, sales to my bottom line at the end of the year and it solves a lot of problems. Again, like I just mentioned, you can come up to that door. Hey, we have this problem. Cool. I'm going to fix it now temporarily. We're going to order the hinge, buys you a couple days. By the time you get back, it'll last you at least that long. Uh, in most cases that are not that severe, the hinge doctor will actually solve most of your hinge problems. I got your ugly one. Yeah, that was good. They got uh, they had a sale on those. All right, so angle grinder, the thin metal cutting blade, is what I use to cut through the hinge. Cut all the way through the hinge through the first layer of steel. Scoring the internal layer of metal. So when your hinge comes together, you have two flaps. Okay, you need to cut completely through one side and at least score the internal side. You do not need to cut all the way through both parts of the hinge to remove it. Think back to the picture about angle grinder safety. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I mean, we'll address it right now. But uh, do I have a couple videos with the guard not being used with by, by myself? Yep, it's me. The angle grinder that I'm using only spins at 8,000 RPM because it's battery powered, not 13,000 RPM like a corded one. So that is one of the main reasons. Even if that blade did come apart, it would not be flying fast enough to do anything. Uh, and then all of my safety gear, gloves, uh, and et cetera, would also protect me from that as well. Uh, personal choice. This is the only time that we got a chance to capture some of this stuff on video. It is what it is. Uh, use your guard. Okay. Lots of sparks, lots of smoke. We're cutting steel. So external application only. Be aware of any fire extinguisher or fire um, smoke detectors, uh, anything that's flammable around you. Do not set anything on fire. You will have a bad day. Use vice grips to bend the hinge back and forth until it breaks. Beware the hinges will be hot. Use gloves. Where did my sound go? Okay, sound, restart. There we go. This is the first time I've attempted to try this and it worked out extremely well. We use an angle grinder. Make sure you use your guard with yours. I don't have mine anymore. Make sure you wear eye protection. These are safety rated glasses. Make sure you have your own safety glasses full face shield and or gloves. This is in an outdoor setting. It looks a little indoors, but it leads to a corridor that's outdoors. You don't want to be cutting and burning things if you're inside the building. You set the smoke alarm off and the fire alarm, bad times. However, this worked extremely well on all of these. It probably took, what, 10 minutes to be able to cut all these off? Maybe less. So, good cut off wheel, cut, cut, cut. Cut them as flat and flush as possible, and then pretty much on the back side, I just scored it once I was all the way through the front side. Basically just came in, scored this, came back with the vice grips, gave it a couple pulls back and forth, and it pops right off, nice and clean. Everything's nice and smooth here. Uh, there is just a little bit hanging out, but once we get that continuous hinge hung up on here and the self-tappers put in, we'll go ahead and open the door and pull the hinges from the inside. They'll drop out of the way, and when we put our through bolts on, it will suck it up as tight as it's ever going to get. Get All righty, so there's the hinges. The hinges are gone. Uh, the internal portions are still mounted, but as I just explained, when you mount the hinge, as long as there's nothing impeding it, you will open the door, take the screws out, hinge plates will fall off, and you are done. Mm -hmm. Just like that. There you go. Hinges come right off. You don't have to cut all the way through them. Um, that's all good stuff. Picture of it right there. You can see where we scored it, and then it just couple bends comes right off no problems <clears throat> cut close enough to install the hinge and not damage the door the remaining uh, butt hinge can be removed after the installation removing the phillips head screws plates will fall out of the way that's what it looks like cutting safety cut and remove the hinges when using an angle grinder be sure to use all of your safety gear and PPE so, and safe cutting practices, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's see. Drilling concrete frames explained. Okay. This is a common thing that will happen. You go to mount your continuous hinge and you go to run your self tapper in and you see a little poof of dust. <laughs> ah, then your screw stops spinning. That's bad. That means that you have filled frames. This is how you deal with it. Use a 316th inch masonry bit 
uh, to drill into the concrete. The very first thing is, is do not use a quality bit. Do not use a drill bit of any kind to actually drill that hole. Use the self-tapping screw to cut the metal out of the way and reveal the concrete behind it. You'll be basically be screwing in a little bit and then you'll get through the metal and you'll see a little poof, poof, and you'll get some dust. That means it's time to switch over to your masonry bit or your concrete bit or carbide bit or however you want to refer to it. And using your, your 3 16 inch, it will drill that material out of the way in hammer drill mode. You don't have to have a hammer drill because you're only going in, I mean, a half an inch at best. Um, but it does help. So once you get that out of the way, reuse your self-tapping screw and fasten the hinge in place. You're basically just using the drill portion of that self-tapping screw to get the metal out of the way, hit the concrete, which would ruin any other bit. It doesn't matter. It's a self-tapping screw. And then get the concrete out of the way. You create a void for it with that concrete bit. And then your bit goes in. We do have this on video. Self-tapping screws, when your self-tapping screws are being used, do not grab threads when pre-drilling the metal. If your self-tapper goes in and starts to grab and then stops, you've already stripped the screw or stripped the hole and it done. it's done. Uh, if you strip the hole, it will become useless. Then you'll have to jump all the way up to a 3 8 bit. You'll have to uh, drill out the concrete and you'll have to add a nut zert. Okay, so we've found out that this is a concrete filled um, frame. And you'll find that out. You can pretty much tell before you even get started. Okay? Big sound difference. Hollow. Over here. Okay? So that's the first way to tell. The last thing. Okay, we have a question or we have a comment in the comment section that I would like to address. Mike has said, I poke through with a quarter inch bit and then switch to the blue concrete screws. I have done that. Um, the problem that I find with that is that when you are relying on the steel and the self-tapping screw and the threads of the steel self-tapping screw, steel on steel is very, very durable. It expands and it contracts well and it moves with the heat and the heating and cooling and slamming of the door and the impact. You're never going to just rip a screw out just because of the vibration and impact. However, if you put a, con a screw in the concrete and you're relying on the threaded concrete of, let's say, a Tapcon that goes into the concrete itself and you're not relying on the metal to metal contact, that door over time could possibly fail. Those screws could fail because the concrete is brittle. Every time that door slams, every time it expands and contracts, you're losing friction when you do that. So I've had success with it. I've also had it completely fail. I found that using the metal and using the method that I'm showing right now is normally the, the, the preferred way to do it so it lasts longer. Thing you want to do is ruin good drill bits on this, so don't ruin good drill bits. You can still use the self tappers. If you use the self tappers, one screw per hole, drill through the metal with the self tapper. Then we'll get the concrete bit and we'll drill in a little bit so that it can go. You won't, I mean, you'll know instantly because it won't drill, and if you continue to catch the threads and strip it out, you're going to ruin it. But this is just running the tip in to clear the metal out of the way so that the concrete bit can do its job in the concrete. And then you don't have to waste any good drill bits because you're just using the self tappers that are gonna go in here anyways. Nice. Biggest thing is to not over drill it. So you just want the tip to go in and usually you'll see metal shavings coming out and then you'll see concrete, a little proof of concrete. Metal, 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 metal. Concrete, do you see the little proof? That's it. If you keep running that bit in there, it's going to get the threads, and then you're going to lose the threads that you wanted on the, uh, that are supposed to grab onto the metal. So now we switch over, hammer drill. I've just got a Tapcon bit. I think it's uh, three sixteenths. Um, and we'll just go ahead and, I don't know which one that was. I think it was this one. Doesn't take much. Okay. You're just creating a path 
way for the screw to then go back in. Just like so. I like to drill them all out, let the screw drop and hit the floor, because it's going to be hot, one screw per hole. Okay, so does that make sense to everybody? Just using using the tools that you have in the most efficient way possible so that you use the self-tappers, you ruin those. As soon as you hit the concrete, you're going to trash the bit and you're not even going to be able to really use it on drilling metal again, uh, at least piloting that hole out. So that's that's the key way to do it. I've done a ton of these and I'm showing you the gold that I found. Once again, I've done it the wrong way Every, every which wrong way you can do it, uh, short of not installing all the parts or stripping holes out. But um, this is the best way that I found that lasts the longest and doesn't get me any callbacks. And that's what I'm sharing with you. Uh, so feel free to try your own methods and feel free to try these ones as well. Drilling through through bolts, step bit to pre-drill, three-eighths inch holes for the through bolts. I believe we have the select hinge uh, bit the specialty bit as a demo here too. So fast. Look at how fast this is. There's nothing else that drills that fast. I've tried them all. Nothing else drills that fast. Just for kicks and giggles, let's grab a three eighths bit and show how hard it is compared to that. All right. So we got a three eighths bit, full on three eighths. We have a comment. Uh, Mike has said that the small masonry bits can be difficult to find. You get them at the big back, big box stores in the Tapcon aisle. That's exactly where I get mine. Yes. Excellent point. Thank you for sharing that. That is where you can get those bits. When you go into the concrete aisle and the fastener aisle, uh, the drill bits are there with the Tapcons or concrete bits. Bit. So you can see that it just. So I intentionally did that to show the difference in speed. You saw the first one was the step bit. It just went through like a knife through hot butter. The three eighths bit, and that's a brand spanking new bit. Uh, it took a little longer. It'll do it. Takes a little longer. It's a lot easier and faster, and it just goes right on through the steps. We're actually going to show the bit that uh, that they use here. Go ahead and use this one. This is going to be the select hinge. Uh, was like a HIT. I'll show the part number here in just a minute, so I can get it right. But this is the this is the bit that they sell, and it works great too for this application. That one goes in that row. That's the HIT forty two or something, or HB three fifty seven. HB three five seven. HB357. Make sure the flutes get on the flutes. It's got three flutes. See what I mean? There you go. Give it a stab. See what that one does. faster than a regular drill bit, but it's just all the different options that you have. Which one feels better to you? The stepper. A step bit? Okay. Well, it is what it is. This one's installed a ton of doors too, and this thing's brand new and sharp. It's actually super slick. In fact, we'll probably actually be using this to go all the way through as opposed to the step bit, because this is just a hair under that three eighths, so it actually grabs those rib nuts way, way better. But yeah, you can see that just plows through it. So now we are gonna switch back to this, and we're gonna put use this to go all the way through. And I'd probably start at the top again. That way, when you're wore out, you're down at the bottom. You're not using your hands. So to switch out of clutch mode, go to drill bit. Right? I think that's not clutch mode. 
Yeah. And when those are brand new, that is a really, really nice tool to have. I do like it smooth. Okay, so that hole is too close to the frame. We're actually hitting the frame door stop in there. Uh, if you're that close to the top, that could be what's happening. So that's that's why that one's giving us a little bit of trouble. But again, tip to you, uh, you do not have to install that in in there, and you actually can't. Uh, it will the the Phillips head will hit the door stop and the center portion of the frame and not allow the door to close properly. But other than that, yeah, that, that bit works great on metal, and it works great for this application, drilling it through. All right. Okay. There's your other little tech tip. Just put your little piece of tape on that step bit. Um, then you don't over drill by accident. Through bolt installation, through bolt tips. Use a probe, line up the through bolts. Uh, do not cross thread the bolts. Turn the setting down on your drill and your impact driver so that you do not cross thread them. Uh, be careful to not over tighten the bolts and crush the door. Uh, you want the bolts tight, but not to deform the door. Alright, so we're gonna put our sex nuts in. They should grab a little bit. These ones are a little bit bigger than we like. So we're gonna go right in like so. The teeth are the, the ribs are still grabbing. Just enough to where it goes in. And the more you can get it in, the flatter it is, the nicer it is. You also don't want to keep it on top of the door when it's hitting the hinge. Okay. We may or may not be able to use that top one. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Easy peasy so far. Uh, I mean, these things are just gold. It, doing these hinge installations, they're good, good money, and they're not that hard. Taking a simple screwdriver, going in there and lining that bolt out first is going to be the absolute key to not stripping the bolts and making sure that they're straight. You want to make sure that that bolt is coming in straight and you can actually look in the hole and see it. And if it's not straight, you can go ahead and use that probe to be able to get it straight. Oh, and we don't want to wrinkle the door. You can't back it off. It's already done, but that's, you got to be careful. Okay. okay. A little pull is okay. It's really dark. And nobody's going to notice on this a little more on this door. More, 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 more. Just when, it starts. Just when it barely starts, yeah, because you don't want it to come loose, but you don't want it. You don't want it to be wrinkly either. You don't want to make it look like an accordion. Sure. There you go. But that's the key right there. People strip these things out all the freaking time, okay? And they're stripped out because they don't take that step and straighten that out. Oops, you pushed it out. That's okay. I'll grab it. 
So this is exactly what you can do by yourself. If you have a pair of vice grips, if you push a bolt out, go outside, grab it with your vice grips, it'll end up hitting the wall or something and that'll stop it so that the bolt doesn't spin. Go. Okay, hold on, plan B. Uh, we got a question from Gordon. Need any Loctite? I mean, that's your personal preference. I, man, I have never had, if all of the through bolts are installed and they're all installed properly, I've never had any back off my personal. And, and actually it's a, they're almost already like better than Loctited because the through bolt sleeve is aluminum and the bolt itself is steel. And if you have ever had to deal with a steel on aluminum scenario where the th steel threads into aluminum, it almost never comes loose because it is practically welded together. If you ever try and undo one of those set screws on a bottom pivot, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I would say that it would be unnecessary, but you could certainly do that if it if the, if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, where is... spinning issue. You can do this by yourself too. You can come out here, mock the vice grips onto it, and then go on the inside and go ahead and continue to screw it in. All of this is solely purpose so you can do this by yourself. We're not wrestling with the door. Okay, so we got some spinning issues. It, it happens. You're just going to have to deal with it. Um, it's just part of the it's part of the process. If you drill a hole absolutely perfect to the three eighths hole, you usually won't have too many spinning problems. And you tap that in. Um, that's just my personal opinion. It, if you do this, you're going to have to overcome it. It would be nice if they kind of notched them out or something, but uh, then that just gives somebody something to grab onto from the secure side of the door to unthread the bolt from the outside. So that's probably why they don't do that. <laughs> all righty cover cap treble screw it down uh add three self-tapping screws will ensure that your cap stays locked in place make them pin and torques if you need higher security uh the cap was not seating properly so this was a solution for me these are the these are the real deal things the videos that i show these are real jobs real applications this is not a classroom this is not all pre-staged and pre-done where everything's perfect and it's a brand new door and everything you know just lines up and works we're dealing with frames that are not square we're dealing with doors that are old and saggy we're dealing with all of the problems that you're going to deal with in the actual real world so uh ugly utility door like this there won't be any issues with looks on a nicer door you probably want to ask first Self tapper. Did I give you another one? Yep. One. Gotta just force this to not come off. Again, let's have a look at this door and the situation. This isn't the prettiest setup. So, having a little bit of hardware on here for stabilization is going to have a way, but if you're on a city hall or a bank, don't do this. Okay? Okay. Problem solved. And I'll just go ahead and tell you guys, this is exactly how I train my employee. These are the first two continuous hinges that uh, Sarah, that was with me a while before, had ever installed. And this is exactly how I taught her how to do it. And it's the exact same way that I'm teaching you how to do it. After she did this, uh, she could install them on her own. Uh, a female could go out and install these hinges on that big giant door. She, she had done them 
completely solo without me there. And that is proof in the pudding right there that this system really, really does work. All righty. Job well done. This is the result of uh, properly repairing this door. Now the customer will always come back uh, to me for door-related issues. In fact, this one job paid well enough, or this one job paid and also opened the door for more work. So because they had, I think they had three different door companies, two other locksmiths, and a glass company come out and look at this door. And that's the shape that it was in when we got there. This is like six tradesmen later. We solved this problem. Uh, three other companies came over the door over the last two years and tried to solve the problem. They never got it done. They did temporary repairs. They were never going to solve the issue of this door. Um, you know, hinge doctors and all of this other stuff failed. Uh, I personally, personally, with my own company, guaranteed complete flawless operation of this door for three years. And it's been more than that now. And uh, we have not made one single trip back to this location. So the door is still hanging. It uh, it still works just fine. And oh, what is going on with my mouse? Okay. Uh, and has we've never had to go back to it. I put my company on the line because I know that we install these and they just plain work. All right, so we've solved this door's problems. It's an oversized door. It's got more load on it than it should because it's long. It's putting a ton of force. These bearings or these hinges that were originally here uh, just were not up to the task. These things have been replaced. They've been hinge doctored. They've had everything done to them and replaced several times, and they were never going to do the job. So I hinge, heavy duty continuous hinge is going to do the job. You can see there's gap over here. There's no gap over there. The door works flawlessly. It looks nice. It works well. And we're never going to have to mess with this door again. The door or the frame will literally deteriorate before the hinge does. So we solved the problem right. The customer should be happy. No more issues with hinge issues on this door. So like hinge, continuous hinge, does everything that you need it to do. And we install this in about an hour. Doing it the way I've done it, you can install it with one person. More information, check out wayneslockshop.com. So there you have it. That is that is the deal. Uh, storefronts, um, metal hinges, metal doors, everything. Uh, it just solves the problem. I mean, that is a big, ugly door, and it it definitely you know needed something like that. Um, <clears throat> these are outside pictures, uh, add door labels for your company, uh, to call in the future property managers and maintenance workers come and go stickers stay and new property management sees your business. Check out pbp 2000com for the ones that I have. Uh, they'll be happy to make some for you. Here's a couple pictures. There's my sticker right there. We had some glass stickers too. These are the original push-pull stickers we have. I really enjoy the jelly stickers a little bit more. They just look a lot more um, fancy, and uh, everybody's got a push-pull. Uh, those stickers kind of stand out, so I, I prefer the jelly stickers now too. All right. Questions, comments, concerns. This is wrapping up the class right here. Uh, yes, a commercial grade aluminum or alarm lock was added to the door to make it ADA compliant and more professional. I'm sure there were a ton of people eyeing that knob. Uh, the knob is gone and I'm sure that it was eating at some of you watching it be there. Uh, one more thing to go over is there are lots of glass companies, contractors, and other handymen trying to install these hinges. They can easily screw it up and strip out all the screws on the frame side of the door. This can be resolved using blind nuts or riv nuts in an effort to save the door or frame and hinge. Uh, I will be putting together a class all about riv nuts and other fastening devices that you may not know about in the future. So take a look for that. All right. Uh, Wayne's Lock Shop for training videos, exclusive access. If you guys can join, that would be amazing. I have hundreds, if not soon to be thousands of videos at Wayne's Lock Shop. All of the videos that you just saw in HD, 
high definition are already uploaded there for your viewing pleasure. Uh, we want to give another thanks to Steve Pate from Select Hinge. They make the best hinges, and we like that they were willing to work with us to help this class and bring this class to you. Uh, Tyler J. Thomas from Locksmith Reference. Check it out. Good information. Always helps me put together the webinars. Josh Pothers also helps proofread webinars and helped actually pick the system and the platform for the click meeting setup that we're using right now. If you have any website needs, Toronto WebWorks works for you. Uh, last and most importantly, but not least, is HL Flake, uh, International Key Supply, McDonald Dash, HE Mitchell. Lots of service companies, lots of inventory, lots of buying power, and free ground freight with a $100 order to you. Check out hlflake.com. Uh, for taking this class, you also get a 30-day free trial. Um, just go to Wayne's Lock Shop and just uh, in the there's a place to put in notes. It is a vetted page. We do not just let anybody there. There is very high security information. Everything from opening safes, moving safes, drilling safes, installing hardware, uh, panic bar installations. Basically, if you name it, we've got it. Uh, we are a little limited on the automotive side of videos. I do not personally do any automotive work, but if it's got a door, a frame, a safe, or any of that uh, mechanical hardware, electronic strikes, you can bet there's some video education training there. Um, and you can train at home. So while you're at home during the shutdown, there's nothing better you can do with your time than educate yourself like you're doing right now. All of these classes, any webinar that I ever put up, Wayne's Lock Shop members are always welcome for free during the live seminar, and you can always watch it at your convenience later. So check out waynesLockShop.com. For taking this class, you will get a 30-day trial. Just type in HL Flake. All righty. Uh, we also are offering the limited time offer under these circumstances for a $250 lifetime membership to Wayne's Lock Shop. It's a one-time payment. It's normally $9.99 a month, $10 a month, $100 a year, or $250 for a lifetime membership. So uh, take a second, really put a round of applause, and I want to see if we can some thank yous to Travis uh, from HL Flake, who's who's leading the charge in this uh, time and this this webinar and and everything else and allowing me to host this for you. So definitely want to get a big thanks and a big shout out to Travis and HL Flake. If you have not tried them as a supplier, please do. I am utterly uh, impressed and astounded with the service and the quality of product and the prices from HL Flake. Uh, it's open questions. I will be here as long as you have questions. I will be here to answer anything you want to talk about. We can talk about screws, drills, tools, hinges, anything you want to talk about. Now is the time. I am here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Informative webinar. Very good. Unfortunately, Sarah no longer works for me. She is on the... She had to move. So, um, you know, it, it uh, was sad to see her go, but... Uh, She's doing well. All righty. You are welcome. You're welcome, Scott, Lisa, uh, Mick, Ray, everybody, Leo, Richard, <clears throat> Denise, everybody that's here, Gary, David, Travis, Joshua, Rola, Andre, Mike, Don, Rhino, or Ryan. I'm sorry if I'm having trouble seeing, pronouncing that one. Um, Ooh, Tom, Mike, everybody, everybody, thank you. These are I'm I'm glad these are working, and I'm glad that you guys are believing in yourselves and taking some initiative to get some education. Don't just sit on the couch and watch Netflix. You know, educate yourself, get out there, uh, and and do something productive with this time. Uh, you could order one of these hinges. You know what the best thing, if you want to take this class, well, all this information is fresh in your mind and you've never installed one of these before. If you have a personal door or shop or somewhere where you can put one of these on, do one for the first time while all this information is fresh in your head. Do it for yourself or somebody that you know, a buddy, a friend that has a shop that has some door problems. Get all the bugs worked out of it. Follow the steps Add your own stuff to it. Add your own little quirks or, or whatever you want to do to it and make it your own and put this thing to work for you. I would say that installing continuous hinges is probably the most profitable and uh, largest portion of my business income. 
to be 100% honest. All righty. I'm going to wrap this up. It is 636. Uh, if we do not have any questions uh, in the next minute or so, then I will wrap this up and end the webinar. What do you like for wireless earpiece? Um, what was that? I don't wear them anymore. Uh, I got it at Office Depot. Ah, crap, I can't remember. It was like ProLogic or something like that. Maybe I might even have it. Hold on. Unfortunately, I think I got rid of the earpiece. I don't use Bluetooth anymore. I just talk to people on the phone or talk to them through the speakers, through the uh, truck if we have to use hands-free. Um, I posted it on my Facebook page somewhere, um, but it began with a P, and I got it at Office Depot. Hmm. Any challenges with installing this hinge on a dented service entry door on a commercial space? I would say you would really want to make sure you try and, uh, you know, bend that back or do whatever you need to do to try and straighten it out before you install the hinge. Although, I, I mean, if your hinge is this way and it's got a big bow in it, it's not going to operate because the gears need to mesh together. So you would have to come up with some way to at least get it pretty straight. I, I would say there's a little bit of room for deflection and there's a little bit of room for margin of error as far as a dent in or a dent out. But I think anything in or out um, this way would, would not be good. If it's bent this way and your hinge is straight, so let's say your two portions of your frame are mounted like so, and this one is dented in a little bit. As long as your hinge is actually straight, I don't think it would affect anything. I think it would work just fine. It's just a matter of, is it going to crunch something else in the frame? Uh, hopefully that makes sense. But if it's dented, if your two frames are here and it's dented in this way, that will probably not work until it's been readdressed or, or fixed. Uh, AirPods. Yeah, AirPods are great. Those would work really good too. Uh, noise canceling. Awesome for the truck. Sure does kill the rattles and the road noise. Awesome tip, Mike. Uh, yeah, if you got AirPods, that's good too. I kind of like to have my ears, like if you got something noise canceling, um, I mean, I like to hear other things. I don't like to restrict my hearing. That's kind of why I don't wear that Bluetooth device anymore. PT Legend. Yeah, Rolla got it. That's it. It is the PT Legend. That is exactly the model of uh, Bluetooth that I used. I did like it. I just don't use it anymore. <clears throat> Do I have a list of what I normally keep in back stock? Um, I probably have 10 hinges on hand at any time. Uh, I have five or six in both colors. And I always have at least three or four, um, or I guess two in each color of, a, of an extra long hinge. I have a like a 93 or 95 or whatever that 90 measurement is for tall door for emergencies because I'm the only one that does them and does them right uh, in, in this area that I know of. So when I need them, I need them and I go through a bunch of them. I probably, like I said, I probably have 10 of them. I keep two on the truck, one in Duranautic, one in aluminum, two of them on each truck at all times, and then have 10 in the shop. <clears throat> Hopefully that answers your question, Joshua. Don, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bondo. Yeah, you could Bondo it, but maybe. Boy, I think... I mean, the real answer is to replace the door and frame. If you have a bent frame, you need to replace the door and frame. That's pretty much the, the professional way to go about that. If you're not going to replace the frame or they're not going to do it, I probably wouldn't even touch the door. I just don't want the liability. I don't want the headache. I don't want the return trips. It's not worth my time. I'm not going to guarantee that door. I will put a bid in for a new door and frame, and I do have a class on doing doors and frames, um, but that is that's about it. Uh, AirPod is transparent made actually amplifies the environment. Yeah. I just don't like having stuff in my ears. I mean, their iPods are great. AirPods are great. Uh, I just, it doesn't work for me. Um, have you installed the hinge on a door with a concealed 
automatic door sweep. No, I have not installed one with an automatic concealed door sweep. But the thing I know about automatic con concealed door sweeps is there are a bunch of mechanical parts that make the door very, very obnoxious, and they usually get ripped out and thrown away, and a conventional door sweep goes in on the outside. That's my uh, concealed door, automatic door sweep. Those things are a pain. They are a nightmare. Get rid of that thing as soon as possible. I still see people typing. I'm happy to sit here and answer your questions as they come in. <clears throat> yeah, automatic uh, door sweep goes in the garbage. That's how I deal with them. Cool. We'll give it a 641. I'm going to give it a full minute with no comments, and then we're going to wrap it up. If anybody has anything else... And you can always contact me in the future. I don't know if anybody's left yet, but if you look me up on Facebook or you look up Tri-County Locksmith Service in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, you will find my phone number. You can call me. I will help you. I will walk you through uh, any of the stuff covered in this video, or I will private message you on Facebook. Uh, I'll put my email up here, and you can email me directly. I am more than happy to assist and help and advise any of you. Uh, for any of the topics covered in the future. If you get stuck, call me. I will help. No problem. All righty. That's about a minute, guys. Grab that email address if you would like to. TriCountyLocksmithService at gmail.com. Uh, I'll post my phone number up here. Grab that. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, call me. Very good. You as well, Joshua. Thank you. I'm going to leave that number up there for just a minute, and then we'll wrap it up. All righty, guys. We're going to shut it down. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're right at three hours and 30 minutes, just so you guys know, uh, with the breaks and stuff, maybe it'll qualify for three hours of CEU, just FYI.